All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. We've been gone for a little bit. We had the uh, the week off. We are now back in business, and it's great to see you all again. Hope you all been well. Uh, before I begin, I do just want to say that SGDQ 2023 is coming up from May 28th to June 4th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, if you're interested in attending the event, registration is now open until May 3rd. Uh, as well, off-site volunteer submissions are now open until March 22nd. So get those in if you'd like to do that. You can go to game amazonquick.com for more information. Anyway, welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be back. Uh, and as well, a lot has happened in the world of horror uh, since then. Uh, specifically, a couple of speed games have had, I want to say, thriving scenes. And weirdly enough, if you follow, I guess, horror releases, we had two major space horror releases uh, in the span of about maybe a month or two. So I thought, hell, why not run them both? So today we're going to be doing a couple of games. We're going to be doing Cluster Protocol and Dead Space, the remake. Uh, to kick things off, we're going to, I guess, we're going in release order here. We're going to be going to the Callisto Protocol with Living Looney Bin. So take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Living Looney Bin. Um, I speedrun Callisto Protocol, mostly men known for Dead Space games. My friend Sharpad will be doing that later. Um, Topher, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Topher. I have done a couple Callisto runs, and uh, I don't know, Looney and I are pretty tight, so we're here to have some fun. Yeah, all right. So time starts in three, two, one. Let's go. First things first, I'm not starting from a new game. The, the first mission of the game is a 15 minute long cutscene that's unskippable, so we just start runs at the second mission. We actually can do things. Um, and give a quick story primer though. This is Jacob. He was a pilot running shipments between the prison on Callisto and Europa. His ship got boarded by some terrorists um, and crashed. And then he, both he and the terrorists got imprisoned. And now we wake up and there's zombies everywhere. Oh, we this. haven't seen any yet. We haven't, hit, we haven't seen any zombies yet, but there are zombies. So I'm going to quickly hit that trigger. Uh, you don't need to hit it, but it makes life a little bit easier for this first trick. So I'm just going to run around this corner for a minute. Do we have to go hit a checkpoint down here. So down here is our friend Elias. But we're not going to talk to him. We're only here to grab this checkpoint. Some friend. Some friend. So this is the first skip of the game. It's called Brov Skip. It's called that because the first thing Elias says to you is he calls you Brov. So we're going to go back up the stairs now. Hitting and reloading that checkpoint is actually removed for some reason. We don't know why. This is the only case that we know of that this happens. But reloading that checkpoint actually removes some of the collision um, on this mattress. So we can climb up on this mattress. And if I can try and line it up. I have to run. Oh, there we go. Nope. Uh, Toph, do you want to try and explain what I'm doing while I'm trying to? Yeah. So this game um, has some weird physics with stomping. So if you are facing some walls um, and you stomp, it'll throw you backwards a little bit, and it differs depending on where you are in the run animation. So that's why we look at Jacob's head bob when it goes to the right on these things and I think it's a cycle of five or so and we try and do the stomp right when it's on the peak with it lined up a certain way um, it's it's a lot because if you do it in wrong times you can go way too far, you can go over the railing, you might not go far enough so it's and it's also FPS dependent so it's a bit of a goofy trick so I'm just gonna yeah, more than welcome to go for it. Uh, so I do want to mention really quick, uh, we actually talked about this uh, before we did the run, but uh, FPS dependent, so we're not going to be able to watch in Discord for a moment, but uh, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, so <clears throat> with this, we are trying our best to just get on top of this uh, little piece of collision behind us. Um, and then from there, we'll be able to go on to part two of the trick. There's part one and part two, and <laughs> they are both a bit of a pain and uh, hardware dependent. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, Would Alunia, you believe that I got this first try when I was practicing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess there's a general question right now, uh, Topher, while Looney's working on the trick. Uh, do you know roughly about how much time the combination of tricks here saves? 
Um, let's see. It goes from here all the way through the part where we get our first weapon. So, isn't it like seven or eight minutes? Seven? Or it's something like there we go. <laughs> you say seven? Right. Yeah, it's, it, it's like it seven is, or eight minutes. It's bonkers. Oh lord. Okay. Yeah. So. I'll turn the might... Discord stream on after I finish this trick. Yo, yeah, yeah, take I your time, this. dude. Do what you need. The trick is more important okay. than us to be able to see it. I know Topher knows well, uh, run well enough. I can see from the uh, regular stream from Owen here. So, what I'm doing here is there's a level below me right now, and I screwed up. <laughs> That's all right. I have to do the stomp again. Um, What I was trying to do there is the game's loads are actually triggered by the absolute position of Jacob's camera, not where Jacob is himself. So if you aim in certain directions, you can change the timing of when things load. So I was looking up really high. So the camera is actually below Jacob. So the camera enters the level before him and it loads in above him. I kind of messed it up a little bit. That's all right. I got the uh, stream back up. <clears throat> Same. Or the restream. Yeah, so unfortunately, this run is a bit tough to get into be um, because this trick is literally seconds into the run starting. So it can be reset heck, you know, for lack of me not being sure if I can say another it's, word, this but. is another reason why we don't start the run on the first mission because you'd have to watch 15 yeah. <laughs> minutes of unskippable cutscene and then have to do this. Reset hell is a thing. Uh, it is absolutely a thing. Uh, as well, I guess, are there any other major tricks that are like, uh, I guess, uh, throughout the run uh, as a whole? Because I'm believe. excited to see what's coming up. There's a lot yeah. of really big tricks in this run. I'm definitely happy yeah, that, um, uh, sorry, uh, but I'm happy that this one is right at the beginning. I, I know, um, you know, having a reset hell is going to be rough, but it's better to have it here, like a trick like this, like, you know, right at the beginning, as opposed to having your two hour run dead in the last 10 minutes. Oh, that can happen yeah. too, don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we no, have, the later uh, ones aren't so bad. I mean,. I'll, I'll make a tier list at some point of the tricks in this game, but I think like after about halfway through the game, there's a few there's a few small ones, but the big ones are you know kind of behind us. They're in the first half of the run. It's pretty front loaded, yeah. So unfortunately, this is one of the harder ones. Um, Looney and I disagree about how the three terrible ones rank, um, but we are only going to be doing. I think for one of them, we're going to be doing a simple one for habitat. Yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not doing the habitat launch. <laughs> oh my goodness! That I, we'll talk about that one later. But yeah, this one is uh, quite something. So um, um, I want well, well, yeah. some part of the trick. So Topher, uh, exactly. Do you know how high roughly FPS is needed for people that should run this? Because I can imagine having a game that is you know depending on high FPS can vary on different computers and all that. Yeah. So what we have, um, I think. Some some community members have had recently upgraded their GPUs and have gotten like pretty high FPS. Um, so we found out that like some tricks are free. Um, there's also some goofy physics stuff though. So like if you get more than 100 FPS, uh, 150 FPS, excuse me, um, there are some things that just don't work. I think an example is that there's like a hover box that you're supposed to be able to like grab and move, but it, you just can't pick it up at 150 FPS or something. Gotcha. So. Yeah, the so game we, breaks at 150. Um, the boards at the moment have uh, 120 FPS and 60 FPS categories. This is uh, 120 FPS. Um, to get this particular launch, you need at least, I think it's like 100, and about 100 FPS. But it gets easier the more FPS you have. Yeah, so we have, we have really? to cap it there, um, and that makes it a bit easy because, like, if we didn't cap it, um, you know, somebody might get 200 one time and then 150. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. slight variations can make it very unpredictable. But, yeah, so. it's not just the FPS that affects this. Your angle and, like, what frame of the running animation you're in when you hit the stomp button all affect it. But yeah, we've, we've done a lot of labbing for lining this up. So, like, you have to line up 
you know, I, I use the left side of my screen to look at some of the railings. Um, like I mentioned, the head bobs, we have to time it so that you do it when it's at like the furthest to the right. Um, the first couple of days of this being out, uh, when this was found, we were like labbing, trying to figure out a really good setup for it. And it's, <laughs> it, we, we can try and find something better, but it's, uh, the run as a, as, as a whole is a bit unforgiving. So it's, you know, I'm trying to think of a good, a good analogy, but it's we all know what we're rough. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, really quick, just as a couple of things, uh, both for, um, Looney and for uh, Twitch chat. One, we started earlier, so we have plenty of leeway time as we normally do. Uh, two, uh, me and Looney did talk about estimate or estimate is actually higher to expect for things like this. And three, Twitch chat, lend your energy, uh, Pipe your favorite cheering based things in chat because uh, it looks like we're going for uh, a nice attempt here. Uh, keep in mind this trick saves seven minutes, so even uh, even with all this, I think we're still saving time. Yeah, this is still be faster. If if I got it right now, this is still be faster than doing it without this trick. That being said, if you're going for a top time, I think like if you don't get it with, I think Actually, I, I reset if I don't get it in three tries. Oh yeah, that that sounds <laughs> about right for me as well. Well, that's because, you know, you're, you you tend to be, uh, you get it, it, you're not comparing against the casual game at that point, you're comparing it to your own runs. I gotta get the backup here. Yeah. Oh, I actually got the backup? Oh my god, what? Wait, what? Let's go. <laughs> wait, wait, so are, what does that part of the trick do? Because, like, I Okay, that's one. the backup, that's the backup strat. Okay, <laughs> you we're good, we're past the trick. Space. Okay, I'll explain that. So if you saw the, hold on, I can actually turn on, I don't need high FPS anymore, I can turn this back on. Right, we go off um, stream and Discord again. <laughs> we're going back? Yeah, we're going um, to Discord again. So, when, so the whole Jacob stomping being buggy is particularly bad when he's inside collision, so that's why that stomp launch off that mattress works, it, the collision's a bit glitchy up there. Sure. But also, like I was saying before, the camera, the loads are controlled by the camera position. So that was something called a stomp launch. Uh, now that's the backup strat, because you're not supposed to get stuck in the floor there. But what I can do is if I flick the camera down, the level unloads. So if I stomp and then partway through the stomp animation, because it tries to get Jacob out of the collision, but it can't, because it, it tries to give him a bunch of momentum, but it can't because he's stuck. But if what it gives it the momentum and you unload the level by flicking the camera, you can just go super, super fast across the entire level. And we'll be doing that in some other places later on. Yeah, at, at least one, but that was that was really sick. Sorry, I was... Yeah, I was I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, Admittedly, I don't <laughs> always... Like, I know the general gist of the run, I know the reputation of the run, but I don't know every part of the run, so sometimes watching it on the stream here is always a fun, like, oh my god. So it's kind of a nice, uh, what's the word? It's fun to see this. I'm watching along with the audience sometimes. Yeah. I, I think the fact that you you say you know the run and you haven't done it, I don't think, that says I, everything you need to know. I'm aware, like, I'm aware <laughs> that I've heard the reputation of this run is quite difficult. Like, I know about some of the unskippable cutscenes, but I've heard this run has some wild tricks. It's like, all right, this will be fun. Yeah, they have mentioned that they are going to be working on a cutscene skip mod. Not mod, but uh, the devs are going to be adding skippable cutscenes in the future. Well, we'll see. <laughs> well, we will see. Um, <laughs> we got Glenn to tweet at uh, Fiery, because Fiery was asking about, like, hey, Glenn, is this something we can have? And he responded saying, like, yes, this is on our radar, but... <laughs> but it's low priority, so, so it's yeah. not... And L Looney and I, it, for our day jobs, because we don't speedrun Callisto full time, but we're both developers, and I think I when I hear something's low priority, uh, it's it's not going to happen. Oh. But we will see. Yeah. Uh, but, but we've done we've had like estimates for how much time it's going to save, or if we just skip cutscenes, and it's like forty five minutes at least. I don't think it's that much anymore because of all the skips, but I don't, I'm not sure how much it would skip, but it would save a lot. Anyway, this is um. Captain Ferris, he is the best character in the game. I love the, the job the voice actor did for this character. Yeah, um, I, I hope we get him back for a DLC or something, but... You know. Yeah. A little more info on those stomps. Those stomp launches that I did there as the backup, um, they are part of the reason why this game has such a reputation for being cursed as a speedrun. Because in the world record route, you have to do that first trick. 
Uh, but then there's two other of those launches, and <laughs> one of them, the habitat one, which I won't be doing today, uh, is so difficult that I think I've hit it twice in runs ever. And it's the pro the other problem is it's like 25 minutes in. But well, the, the problem yeah. is that one requires you to launch at a certain angle, like height wise, and the height you get the launch depends on the timing of the unload in your stomp animation, which is different depending on what your loads are at that particular moment you do the unload and like your, your speed, you flick the camera and where, how far you get stuck in the floor and it's just... It's like driving a car, you know? You have to get a feel for it. Oh, oh, wait, this, we're gonna, no, wait, yeah, we got another trick here. So, like I said, the, the camera controls what's loaded. So if I just put the camera through that wall, the level unloads, I can drop down. Nice. What? <laughs> yeah, did, did we mention that before? The camera? I did, I did mention that the, the loads are not controlled by Jacob's position like most games. They're controlled by the position of the actual physical camera. So there's yeah. a few tricks where I can put the camera through walls and cause the level to just disappear. And these jerks of developers, dude, they found out about this trick and they put a rock there <laughs> in, the, in the latest patch. So we couldn't do it anymore, so we have to down patch. Oh, God. I feel like developers are getting meaner with games lately. I don't know why. I, in the defense of the Callisto devs, I think a lot of the ones that they've patched have been ones that people are just finding by accident. Because you just crouch in that corner and turn the camera and it just, just the whole level just disappears. I guess that's fair. No, I, I used Cheat Engine, and I looked at the bottom of that rock, and they said, we hate speedrunning. Oh, so, right. <laughs> do, do with that what you will. It is nice um, that you both have a contact with, or, you know, like you have some string of contact with some of the devs, though. Uh, not really for Callisto. We can we tweet at them sometimes. Some Just string, a very small string. Yeah, that is actually we, um, um, one of the good things about the Dead Space remake, which is coming up later. Actually, one of the devs is an active speedrunner of the game. Yeah, and it's, it's very it's helpful. It's really cool. Because they tell us things about the game. Found didn't realize. Captain Ferris had. You ever, uh, yeah, there were like, um, I think like there was an update for Dead Space Remake. And I, th I don't think there were any immediate patch notes. And we were like, what's going on? What is this? And the dev was there to tell us like everything that was part of it. And like, oh, you shouldn't have to worry about anything. It's just X, Y, Z. So... I don't know. I I, th I think that kind of communication is pretty cool, especially when they have a an interest in running the game as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to introduce a couple new mechanics here. Um, this is Grip. You've ever played Dead Space? It's Kinesis, but it is way more broken in this game than it is in Dead Space, particularly because I can pick up enemies and throw them. So this will be like our bread and butter for getting through the game, just like either throwing enemies out of the way, throwing them off ledges to instant kill them, throwing them on spikes to instant kill them, throwing them on bits of collision that they can't pop off of so they glitch and die. Yeah, it's um, it's stronger than the, than the Kinesis is in Dead Space. However, um, it's balanced by the fact that you only get a certain number of uses, and you can tell by the little light on the back of Jacob's neck, you know, if you have uh, any charges or not. However, however... Um, any time that you do a checkpoint restart, or just, you know, restart the last checkpoint in general, it fills up your grip all the way. So if you just see Looney um, restarting randomly, um, that's why. In a few cases, it's to save a little bit of time on, a, like, a, some movement or a little cutscene, but for the most part, that's why we do it. Because this is one of the biggest ways that we get through combat. Yeah. One of the other issues at the moment is that skip that I did earlier where I turned around and unloaded the level um, actually skipped me getting the first gun of the game. So I currently do not... I currently only have my melee and the grip to fight things. Um, which will be... it can be a bit of a problem for some of the enemies up ahead. Like the one right here? Like the one right here. I've lost a few runs to this enemy. <laughs> Yeah, so for this one, there's a new enemy. I, I forget the name, but it's like a snakehead or something. 
Well, yeah, we just form snakeheads in the community. Yeah, so... Oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh We're good. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so what happens is that if you get close, like, this tentacle thing will come out, bite you on the neck, and start dragging you in. And normally when that happens, you have a little, like, wrench shiv that you get from uh, Elias, which we skipped the cutscene of for Brub Skip. Sorry, I'm going to tangent to tangent. So you, we don't get the little shiv wrench, but that's the that's the item that we use to, I don't know, stab the neck so it can't drag us all the way in. But this game's funny. It makes me laugh. Uh, because we skipped that cutscene, they just never gave the, us the shiv, you know? Some games will have like. Well, they give it to us in some cutscenes, yeah, yeah. like this one to open this. I've got the shiv. But for the, the quick time event to get out of the snake hen's grab, um, it does not give me this. Can you guys get yeah, so my you way? Get grabbed by one, um, <laughs> it, you have to checkpoint and restart. You can't kill it. It'll drag you in, and I think it's an instant kill. Is it? Yeah, it's so an instant the one at the kill, bottom yeah. of the elevator, if you forget about that and it grabs you and you checkpoint and restart, the last checkpoint's at the top of the elevator. My first run, I lost an entire minute because I had to go do that entire sequence twice. Also, um, if uh, there are any questions about the run or anything that we're not explaining, you can just at me in the chat and I'll hopefully answer it. I just so like there, I just throw that spitter onto that box and it can't pop off of it. It just clips in and dies. And then like throw this guy into spikes, yep. pick up his fuse. Oh, that guy just teleported. That's so bad, it's fine. This game is goofy. Um, the fuses are something we haven't really explained. They are what exactly what they sound like, using the power things, mostly doors. The thing is, there are several ways to either dupe or get extra fuses that you're not supposed to have. And the game will just keep an active count of how many fuses you have. So if I get a fuse and don't use it, I can use it later on another spot. So we'll be using grabbing some fuses a bit later to take with us through the entire game and use it to skip a boss at the end of the run. I also got finger guns. I don't think I mentioned that. Because I don't have a... The game does not expect you to have a gun and grip. But it wants... needs me to be able to aim. Elias, you there? Uh, we got a question for how were some of the skips found. I will say, I, I believe for Brev Skip, I can't remember who it was. But there was someone who was in the Discord and they were like, today I'm going to start my first casual playthrough of the run. And they literally found that seconds in of playing the game casually. I wish I remembered who it was, but once they were oh, like... The world of the way. Huh? How do they find that? It requires <laughs> you to go like, like requires you to go down, reset the checkpoint, I, then walk back. I don't back. think it was that stomp launch that got found first. We had okay. found... There's a lot of spots where you can just get little stomp launches in that first area but they don't really help. And then someone found that one, and then it became, and then after a while, we figured that one out. So yeah, it's too wild of me. Also, somebody's asking if there are any glitches um, that we don't use because it doesn't save time, and I think Grip Skip would be one of those, correct? Well, Grip Skip could save time, but Grip Skip, I don't think saves time in New Game. This mission that I'm doing right now is almost 20 minutes long, and that skip that I did right at the start, if you, port, if you pause the game at the right time, you can land on the roof, and then you can do another one of those launches like what I did before, where you get stuck inside the level and then launch, and you can skip this whole mission. One, it's really hard. I've only done it once. That's right. Nice. So I'm trying to make sure those spitters if you pull them forward just a little bit, they die. I don't want to pull them so far forward that they fall off the edge, because I want to loot them. Yeah, these ones give a lot of money. Because I still need I need money for a gun. Um, but yeah, yeah, so Grip Skip would say, skip this whole mission, and it's like, oh, it would save like 20 minutes. But then without Grip or a gun, uh, you lose so much time in the rest of the game that it just ends up not being worth it. Yeah, it would. It's like you'd be you'd get that one split that would be like I'm doing so great, but then every subsequent one would be like uh oh, uh oh, uh, and then you know then we're in trouble. Will this run eventually yeah. get a gun? I actually will be getting a gun right after this fight sequence here. Yeah, so for this section right here, um, the idea is that there's like spinning 
generators and things everywhere. And they're basically telling, like, hey, you should try using that grip thing and throwing them in there. So there's, like, grip batteries that we get that we can sell for money. Um, we want to be throwing these enemies just into, like, the gears and then stomping them to get money. So this is, like, uh-oh. Well, I've never, never done that one before. Tried to vault over that and just hit the, <laughs> the thing. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, so... You know, we get these little health things. We can sell them for a hundred credits. Uh, the, those, I forget those enemies. The the, the ones that give you a hundred, the spitters. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so they give you a hundred. Um, this can be a bit of a pain in the routing because we want to be able to buy two things. One is we want a gun, and two is we want a little uh, energy upgrade chip for grip, um, so that we can use it more. And we try our best to be able to get those at this store at the, at the very top of this, uh, I don't know, this little area right after this section. So some people, you know, if they're going for top times, if they don't have enough money at that point, they will restart. Um, it's but, pretty rare you, you know, don't get enough money. Well, I'm not good like you, so <laughs> sometimes I have to. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, I, I just get the gun and I'm like, whatever, I'll buy grip later. Or I'll, I'll get the grip upgrade later. So, yeah, we just run around and throw, throw these people into the gears, stomp them, get money. Uh, and you'll know that the fight's almost over because I think the last one has, like, the yeah, riot like, armor or something. Yeah, it's like police armor. Next one's going to be here, right? The spawns are always the same. I'm just mainly trying to make sure I move through the room, pick up all the med kits in the room because they're like 100 credits each, loot the spitter. Yep. There he is. The game's a bit... The game's gonna be very frugal with the amount of money it gives you. Most normal enemies will only give you like five or six credits. And Criminal. it's really dumb. Cause like the game's like, the, the, the most expensive weapon takes like 30,000 credits to fully upgrade and the enemies drop like five credits. I, I will say that later in the run, there will be like items that you can find. Um, that'll be like, oh, you can sell this for 10K credits. Like the game wa is very, I think you said Google starting out, but later on, like when you get to the end of the run, they'll just be like, you know what? Have 10K credits, go watch, you know? So I don't think you're supposed to be able to fully upgrade all your guns in a single run. I don't think I've come close to doing that, but um, no, I don't, maybe one There's not enough money in the game to fully upgrade everything in one run. All right. Didn't get quite as much money as I would like. Um, I would normally like to have a med kit here as well, but I had to sell all the med kits to get enough money. But that's okay. So, so now, now we have a gun. Do we want to talk about story stuff? Yeah, we can. So, Elias, we got Elias out of prison, out of his cell, and. The, the plan is Elias knows how to get us to the hangar where the ships are. Jacob can fly a ship, but we need someone who can hack the ship to remote so they can remote it down from space. Uh, Elias looked up the prisoner manifest and found that there was a person with hacking skills in what's called the shoe, which is where I am now. This is the uh, special housing unit for like dangerous criminals or like terrorists or whatever. So we're trying to bust That's them out. That's keep me. I found it. <laughs> But you never, you'll never guess who it is that we find in here. Maybe you will. Uh-oh. I, I, Jacob really should have checked the one corner he can't see when he walks mm. into this cell. Sure this is the right one? Yeah, he's, he's a bit goofy. So. <laughs> anyway, this is um, Danny. She is the leader of the terrorist group who boarded Jacob's ship in the start of the game and caused it to crash. So they do not like each other very much. No, you're not, you're you're being mean to her. She didn't cause it to crash. Didn't it crash because like he opened up the uh, cargo section to get them out? Uh, I don't remember why it crashed. We, we, I try not to watch that 15 minute cutscene very often. The point is that they don't like each other because he's the re she's the reason that he's here and he's the reason that she's here so you know they're mad you can you can tell with that grumpy face right there <laughs> all right so this we can skip the rest of this dialogue but this checkpoint 
Not all of these checkpoints save time in like real time. That one does. But a lot of them I still have to do to keep my grip meter up. Yep. So. I'm trying to think what else there is uh, between now and the end of the chapter. We have the one robot section. There's not that much. There's just, well, there's still like a few minutes of this chapter, but it's just, there's nothing like super crazy. Oh, there's that trap room. No, that's in. That, yeah, that's in this one. Yeah, that, that's that's this chapter. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But. There's a couple more snake heads that I gotta deal with. Yeah. Also, with this game, really, they were like advertising this game about like, oh, there's zero loads, like all the it's all seamless and stuff. But then you get a lot of sections like this where Jacob is crawling or going through the, some little sections and it's like we know what's really going on here. This, you know? this section is the worst for that because it is um, a couple minutes of just shimmying. There's a couple enemy fights. They introduce you to the little infected enemies, which aren't really an issue. Wait, which enemies? Oh, the little crawly worm things. Oh, I didn't know that's what they were. You know, you play the game casually once, so you miss a lot of these things. And by we, I mean me, but I'm projecting, so... This one enemy, if it decides, can just follow me through this whole area. It'd be really annoying. Hopefully it doesn't. There's no way really easy to kill it. I've got another snake head here. Oh, please don't miss my shots. Nice. Alright, I was going to go for the fast strat on the worms coming up, but I only have three bullets. And that is not enough bullets. Yeah, if you haven't gotten it by now, there's... We try to, like, we try to avoid as much combat as we can, so... Oh. Because, like, just picking up the enemies and throwing them is a lot faster than fighting them. Throughout the whole run, so. But yeah, I think this is like probably the slowest part in the run right here. Yeah. As far as like just I don't know. This is not definitely much going on. Oh, uh, this is one of the slowest sections. I don't like this section a lot because when I'm doing world record attempts, I have to do this and then I have to do the hot trick in the game right after this. Yeah, the the little trap room. Oh no, the habitat lounge. Yeah. Oh. That, that, there's a, um, I don't want to start explaining it before we get there. Actually, we're almost there. Um, so the end of this chapter, like, has this one room. It's a single hallway with, like, a spinning, it, it looks straight out of Saw. Not that I've ever seen a Saw movie, because those are scary, but. I, it's, it's like a Saw trap, but like a spinning tower of blades that comes down a hallway, and you have to, like, hide on these little, uh, these little divots on either side. But there's also enemies that come in, so you have to, like, You'll like dodge them, but sometimes you'll dodge out of the way of the enemy straight into this insta kill machine, and right. I think you lose like a minute or a minute and a half every time. Just you gonna interrupt you real quick. I reloaded the checkpoint at the start of the room, put the robot in a certain cycle. If the robot hits me with its bullets, it's an instant kill. So put the robot on this on a known cycle, and then we can just run through the room. And then either the robot won't see us, or even if he sees us and shoots, it gets blocked by some of the boxes in the room. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't see... I don't think we see any robots after this, depending on which uh, version of tricks we go for. I uh, guess there's the one in the Habitat Dome. You still don't even see it. Wait, what? You don't even see it oh. if you do option processing skip. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's I the only know. robot in the run up until... There's like one in a cutscene later on. We also skipped one in the first chapter. Or... Yeah, the first chapter, but we did grub skip, so we got to skip that one. So yeah, this is the, the trap hallway that Tobe was just talking about. The worst bit is they put the checkpoint before this crawl here. So if I come out here, if I stand in the middle, the trap's going to start moving. Yeah, like, the whole entire point of this... Oh, man. And the whole sometimes point of this, you can just... Actually, you can just dodge when you're not trying to dodge. Um, they haven't really explained the dodge mechanics. If I'm holding a left or right movement key when an enemy swings at me, 
uh, Jacob will dodge. But like there's a cooldown on the dodge, so I've got to alternate the swings, the, the left and right, to keep dodging. But then there's sometimes like that, where I'm like trying to get to the side there, and the enemy walks into my field of view, and then that triggers a dodge, and so Jacob just dodged back into the path. Of the... It is... It, it takes a bit of getting used to. I think when I first started playing this, like, they gave you some, some tutorials and stuff to, like, figure it out, but I was just like, I... I'm having trouble and having this make sense. All right, I think you got this. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I almost, I almost give you the bad luck there. Hey, some people are mentioning that my graphics are way turned down. They are. Um, my PC is not exactly. It's pretty close to minimum specs for this game, and I need 120 FPS for some of the tricks. So. The graphics are way turned down. I made it at the checkpoint. And just for like consistent performance. It looks. I don't know if you fixed it, but like I think in some of the last cutscenes, the lighting is so it. funny. You fixed it? Yeah, I did. No. <laughs> it's like the most charming thing to be watching, like the fastest run in the game, but like it just looks so so bad. Yeah. Sorry, that was a bit personal. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. How the hell am I supposed to get there? <laughs> that shouldn't be me. Um, but yeah, that's this is the end of the um. I can't remember the chapter name. Aftermath. Oh, this is Optima. Out Wait. What are the chapters? Outbreak. Outbreak. Optima. Habitat. Lost one. Lost two. Below. Colony. Tower one. Tower two. Tower three. All right. I'll be in touch. There's no way. I'm <laughs> There's no way this is still the second chapter. You're telling me Bruv Skip would take us all the way here? Is there anything else you haven't told me? What? Do you mean Grip Skip? I'm gonna grab. Yes, Grip Skip. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so think about that. You know, that's a very big trick, but Looney's not convinced it's fast enough. I'm Type not. one in chat if you think it's fast enough. <laughs> Also, we are coming down to a uh, sewer skip. So if you guys like that fun little thing where Looney puts his camera in the wall and then the game does something it's not supposed to, uh, don't touch that remote. Stay tuned for this one. Yeah, this one's a little scary because there's no checkpoint and it's, you lose a minute if you mess it up. But it's all right. It's not too bad. Yeah, and we go straight from this trick into the setup for another one. So... I think Looney mentioned, I don't know, a little bit ago that, like, you get these batteries that we use. No, fuses. We pick up the fuses to, like, use for puzzles and opening doors. Um, but we are going to go into this one room up ahead and grab two of them. And instead of going and putting them where they're supposed to go, we're going to backtrack a little bit and go for a very cool trick. It's an easy version of a cool trick. So, um, so this is sewer skip. There's two ways to do this. There's a box you can drag over to here. Or you can try and just push a camera through the wall. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Sweet. That, that, that's a swag moment right the, there. The boxless version doesn't always work. But so now we're down here. That's the way you're supposed to go. But we're going to grab these fuses. And you're supposed to put them into the two power cells in this room while a bunch of enemies attack you and stuff. We're not going to bother with all of that. We're just going to go back this way. Yeah, and keep keep tabs on how many batteries we have because we're going to be able to use to like skip some sections later on. So I might randomly ask you how many batteries do we have? Not batteries, fuses. I might randomly ask how many fuses do we have? And uh, I have been told that if you don't get the correct answer, you get a timeout. <laughs> All right, so... Okay. I'm just going to grab a safety checkpoint. Yeah, do you want me to explain what you're going to be doing here? Uh, yeah, it's alright. Alright, so... Louie's going to get this guy's attention, and he's going to climb up here, and then use grip and place this guy up here, so that he kind of stays put. Uh, we want him to stay up here, we don't want him to die, because we're going to use him later. Um, we're going to use the collision of his body to push us kind of over a railing, so... I will, I will say, this part, no one talks enough about this, this part, it, it, it's, I'm trying to think of a, it, it's not good. 
you know? I hate this trick. You have to, like, line up very specifically on a railing um, and then run off of it so that you don't do the falling down animation, but instead you just run off. And then you got he's going to bounce off the railing he's aiming at and bounce onto the railing on the right. So we will see if he can do it. All right, That's so now, that, now that we're on here, I'm going to pull the enemy in front of me. I'm going to bounce off his head and land out of bounds. That's another swag moment. So and I'm just going to fall off here. There are a few different versions of what you can do after this. Um, this is where the hardest trick in the game is. So the hardest trick in the game is from that out of bounds, you would then get stuck in the collision of this pipe and do a launch, a stomp launch to the end of this whole mission. Um, but it's it's the, the, the it's like playing slots, if it works. I mean, if you're bad. Yeah. I mean, you can tell me I'm bad. I'm the only one who's hit it in a run. What? I did, I did it in a run. Did you? Get out of here. Yeah, I was... Get out of town. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, so... In that section right there with the um, where you use the enemy to like fall off the edge into the water, what happened? You do not want to turn your camera around when you're up there because like the game isn't expecting you to be there. So if you turn the camera in some weird ways, you can like deload the floor, fall through it, and have to do this all over again. And you might think, well, how hard is it to just not turn your camera around? Not that hard. But sometimes that enemy that you're bouncing off of, he will hit you. Well, he'll hit me, and then I turn the camera around on accident. Like, it's not my fault, so... <laughs> Sometimes that enemy can... If you are too slow bouncing off the enemy's head, you can land close enough to the enemy that the enemy can just punch you, and then you just fall off and die. Um, that trick is not as easy as it looks. And another thing is not as easy as it looks is this sliding section, because I never do this, except in marathon runs. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, chat. If there are any like you know water treatment specialists in here, what what purpose do these poles serve? You know, are these an actual sewers? Do they just put these here to uh, you know stop us from having fun? What's going on here? You know, but yeah, this section. I might what? have messed up some of the tricks at the start of this run. At least I didn't die in this sliding section because every time I've tried practicing marathon safe strats for this game, I've died in this sliding section. Yeah. Can we get some claps for Looney for that one? I think the takeaway is that if you're going to be running something at a marathon, just don't practice. You know? If you I don't, don't practice... Think, I don't think that's the takeaway. Um, these are a new enemy type that was supposed to be introduced a little earlier in, that, in the area that I skipped. Um, their whole shtick is that, one, they're very tanky, and two, they go invisible. We won't actually see very much of them. I'm being told the poles are for the Ninja Turtles to climb on. True. Yeah, this next room is a little bit of a fun combat section. I feel like there's like a fast strat to do it, but I have i can't remember what it is. There it is. Well, it's a good thing you're prepared. This next room, it actually is a little bit of a shame that the, the Reckon Rat skips this room, because this is one of the most fun combat rooms, even though it's just a hallway with four enemies. It feels very Lighting satisfying to do it. My mom works in water treatment, funnily enough. I think it's just to remove fun, but I don't know. I'll have to ask her. I don't know if we can trust this person. All right. So there's going to be four enemies in this hallway. So it's supposed to have introduced to me at this point a mechanic called mutation, where if an enemy takes enough damage, they start to mutate. You see those tentacles coming out of their chest. If you leave them for long enough, they will uh, turn into a stronger form and they'll heal up and become really tanky. But while they're in the process of mutating, if you hit them in the tentacles, they will instantly die. So what I was doing there was throwing each enemy against the wall, which hurts them enough to trigger the mutation. And then I, as I was just throwing each one and then turning back and pinging each one in the chest. We got another skip here. Let's see if I can get this. You got this. There we go. Let's go. This is the only other trick apart from the first one that requires high FPS. Um, at about 
110 to 120 FPS you can get off of this lift after triggering it. I went back up the stairs there, which actually turns this switch back on. So I can send the lift back up and then get on the railing. Oh, let's not fall off the railing. I do this in the elevators at my mall sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so for this one, um, there's the big scary robot in the middle, but we're going to ignore him. And also there's this building up ahead. Um, what Looney's going to do is kind of do a bit of platforming um, and then fall down onto a checkpoint right after you're supposed to get like a key code or something to like open up some doors. I, I can't remember actually. Yeah, so normally you're supposed to go around this whole thing to get the key card, but by doing this we can skip the middle area and then just drop to where the key card is, which is right here. That's a swag moment. Got the lockdown code. Oh yeah, this like a big I don't want to say big mechanic, but like one of the things in this game for like lore co uh, collection and uh, credential collection is you tear the little chips out of the people's necks. So I don't know, you either get their credentials or you'll get you'll be able to pick up lore pieces. So I don't know. I think it's a pretty cool idea. All right. So now I just have to run through the center area. Um, there's a few of those invisible enemies. Hopefully, don't cause too much of an issue to me. So there's one to my left there. Should be one there. Uh oh. The funny thing is, if even though they're in the trees over the edge, if you just throw them over the edge, they instantly die. Yeah, that's something like I've noticed a lot in casual play is that if you like put an enemy where they're not supposed to be. It'll kill them a lot faster than, you know, actually, like, pummeling them. I think, like, there are some examples where there's just boxes, and if you put the enemy on top of a box, they just, like, ragdoll. Yeah, I think... It's very fun to watch. The most known one is there's an enemy on a bed near the end of the game, but if you throw the enemy back onto the bed after it gets up, it just instantly dies. Yeah, we call that go to, go to bed skip, or go to sleep skip. <laughs> nah, I just lied for no reason. So with that, um, if you remember when Looney um, used the enemy to fall over the railing um, and then we went into the sewer tunnel, we were talking about a harder version of that trick that we weren't going to go for. This is where it would take you. You would do one of those stomp launches. You would hit a checkpoint that's right about here. So there's actually a few, but you would hit one of these checkpoints, restart and skip all that stuff. Yeah. No oxygen processing skip, no habitat dome, none of that stuff. So. You try to you try to land somewhere in this area here, right at the end of the mission. I will say though, it does feel great if you can land this in a run. It does. It's actually not in the current world record, actually. Wait, what? Habitat skip. Oh, did you just go for the last? Did you just like go for last skip and the uh, yeah, the version? for the la the latest world record. I took out the habitat launch and I put in last skip. I will say, if you are determined enough and maybe give a week's worth of practice, you could get top three in this game pretty easily. But you have to go for some of these tricks. Actually, the, I, I won't say a week. I'll say a month. I think, well, the thing is it doesn't take that much practice to learn some of these, but getting them all in a run is quite hard. I think that's where the passion element comes into play. You can have motivation, but if you lack passion, you're not going to want it. Also, welcome back, Elias. Yeah, this is Elias. We haven't, we haven't seen him that much. Yeah, so... I think the whole entire... I mean, very quick story-wise, because we have a little bit of time, but... Um, Danny's still mad at us, and, you know, Elias and Jacob, they're like, but we're going to go for the ship anyway, so... Uh, Elias pulled up in this tram thing that's out in the snow, and he's here to pick up Jacob, and then we can head over to the... Uh, I don't know, the hangar, so we can get the ship, so... We're gonna suit up and uh, get going out there, just the two of us. Yeah, this is a 
This is a fast change that rivals Dead Space's stores right here. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, how quickly Jacob changes outfits. Like one one look, and he's got the the suit prison jumpsuit on. Yeah. And then Jacob said, uh, Elias says like three things. It really is something. It reminds me. And he's of, already uh, fully in the suit. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. it it's like in Dead Space Three when you get into the uh, the spacesuit, he just like steps into it, and it's like, I feel like that should take a bit longer to get. Yeah, into but something. at least the spacesuit in Dead Space Three, like it's like unzipped and it shows you how it comes together. Like he just steps in it and zips it up. Yeah. Oh, that, that's Ferris again, but he's not doing too good. And now we are in the snow. Yep. This is, um, if you don't go for Lost Skip, this chapter is a bit of a drag. I think people were like, I think there was, we, we were really looking for a trick to like, you know, I don't want to say save the run, but Lost is a bit of a long chapter. Um, and we were like, there has to be something that we can do. And then Lost Skip was found and uh, those, pe those people ate those words, you know? This trick is, uh, it's top two hard ones. Looney, Looney thinks Habitat's harder. I think this one's harder, but. I, uh, I don't think, I don't think Lost Skip's that bad. Well, maybe because you've practiced it, but you know, I don't practice tricks and then I <laughs> complain that they're, <laughs> I think that's where we're, I think that's where we're at. We still got a little bit to go before we get to Lost Skip. So, Captain Ferris showed up. Ejected us into the snow. Um, we got kind of messed up, so did Elias. We're gonna find Elias now. Um, Captain Ferris is like infected, but he's still got his humanity. He's kind of like, you know, think of like all those like special enemies in Resident Evil games, you know, your Mr. X's and stuff. Well, I think like the human protagonist who injects themselves with the virus, so they're like. Now I will be. This is the ultimate life form. Yeah, you know, that that, kind of stuff. except he doesn't choose it. Ferris, yeah, he just gets. <laughs> Ferris blames us for getting infected. Uh, we got a little skip coming up right here. So this rock, you can do this one at home. See this rock? <laughs> Stand in front of this rock and stomp, and it just eats you backwards. What if that worked in real life? You know, like <laughs> how often do you, how often do you just like face a wall and stomp? Probably more often than you think, seeing as like rock time. Oh wait, you're right. <laughs> Man, that'd be pretty scary. <laughs> that'd be pretty scary. But yeah, if you, if you see the lightning in the background, there's like a tower that gets illuminated near the left of the screen. That's where we're going. That's the hangar. So that's the goal of this chapter. The game tries to give you a scary moment, like you see a figure out in the snow, and then it's like, oh wait, it's a zombie. But. We have grips, so... Yeah. This is another small optimization that I'm doing. Um, Jacob has an animation for climbing down ledges, but if you climb down the ledge at an angle, then we won't do the animation. So we usually just go down a lot of the ledges sideways. You can do this one at home too, but it's a lot less exciting. Oh, and those are lies, by the way. Yeah, Elias is down there. Look at her. Rescue him. Backwards. Yeah, we got a little bit of downtime, so if there are any questions about the run, feel free to ask them, and uh, Looney, Looney and I will, you know, we'll try our darndest to, to uh, help you guys out. Looney, besides Lost Skip, what aren't you looking forward to? Uh, bangers. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Heck yeah. Alright, so Elias is kind of... There's always this mystery every time I see this cutscene. It's like, all that Ferris did was open the airlock, and I don't quite yeah. understand how Elias got so far away from the airlock, especially if his 
his uh, his suit is broken. He really is something. Maybe, maybe, maybe he woke up and his thing was his mask was broken, and he was like, "I gotta get to the shelter," and then he just collapsed over here. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, "Why does stomping push you back so much?" It depends on the collision that you're standing in front of. Um, it's the game trying to basically get you unstuck from a wall. Uh, and then there's a few, only a very, there's only very few spots that it actually is helpful. In that, there's only like the mattress and that spot there where you can just stomp in front of something and it launches you back. The other spots we have to intentionally get ourselves stuck in collision and then unload the collision during the stomp. But anyway, so you think the cutscene would be over because Elias is dead, but then Danny shows up. You know, I will say, I, I appreciate this more than when games will give you a cutscene and then you take like five steps and it gives you another cutscene. Sure. That drives me crazy. Also, you dodged the other question, uh, Callisto race when? It's not a very good race game. Which is why it would be kind of fun. <laughs> it's like, can you imagine if it was who like, gets we did a race who gets for the this, skip at the start of the game first? Where do you think you're going? <laughs> who hits bro first? Oh, pilot, you need me. Hangers that way. So anyway, Danny has procured a car and does not let us use the car. She said she'll meet us at the hangar. Um, we're going to beat her there, even though she's got a car. And then the game does you so dirty here. They put you in front of him so you can have to stand walking on the top of him if you just hold forward. Yeah. I remember what this section is. Is this the one where you have to do the fight or with the... Uh, uh, there's just I a couple of rooms before Lost Skill. Oh, you're, you're right. There's a couple of the enemies. This is where it shows you that there's like enemies frozen. And some of them, like this one, is not an actual enemy. That one's dead. But some of them are still alive and will attack you to get close. This is actually some of the most frustrating enemies in the game right here. Oh, I missed that one. That's all right. Like that yeah, one, it instantly like... grabs me. So all I have to do is get to the checkpoint at the end of this whole play. Yep. But sometimes you can just get stuck there for like 30 seconds because those two enemies will just wombo you. All right. Yeah, it's it's a bit immersion breaking. Oh wait, sorry, I didn't worry. No, no, you can go. Yeah, it's if you know about like if you just checkpoint reset and then enemies will be gone, it can ruin the fun a little bit in a casual playthrough. So um, this is the beginning of Lost Skip, um, and it's a series of little tiny tricks that all tie into one big trick. And like a chain, if a single link breaks. Uh, you gotta go buy a new chain and start over. So, yeah. so that um, I already walked out of bounds there. I, you can just walk up that um, light down there, and if you path that correctly, you just get onto these rocks. And then I'm gonna try and set up. This is probably the for me. This is the hardest part of this trick. Terrible. You want me to explain it? Yeah, you go ahead. So. There are a few places in the run where we get like onto an edge and then as we fall off, we pull up the inventory. And what the game will do is that it'll like, I think it just takes the momentum that you have um, when you're opening the inventory and it just like holds onto it for a little bit. So you can see that Looney's like moving pretty slowly right now. And it, I think it was because he, he jumped off and while opening it, and the game like bounced him off a rock and he was able to move sideways for a little bit. So yeah. we hold on to it for long enough to skip a uh, kill trigger that's underneath the bridge. But now we are beneath the bridge and we are going to do some rock climbing. The crucial part of that is the moment the inventory opens, um, the game removes full momentum from Jacob and that includes just turning off gravity. So if you can hit a slant at the moment it turns it off, you can keep the momentum from the slant but the game's turned off gravity, so I was able to just float across that little gap there and get uh, past the kill trigger. So, that's fun platforming in the snow, you know? This platforming yeah, is very specific. 
No pun intended, but I used to get lost here a lot. And the pun is that this chapter is called Lost. And I think it's really funny. And I gotta be careful because because the camera controls what's loaded, as I move around, different rocks are gonna load and unload. So like here I need to slowly move across. So There's this, an invisible wall he's yeah. walking across right now. When that rock unloads, I can walk through the invisible wall. And then this is honest this one scares me all the time. Stamp. It's if you Dog, don't, I get, I, if you mess this bit up, you just fall off, slide off the mountain. What well, Looney isn't mentioning that I is that I gave him a setup to do that you don't slide off, but he's too proud to use my setup. I like my setup. Okay. <laughs> so we are coming up to the last part of the skip, and I am ecstatic that you've got. I don't want to say I'm surprised, but I'm ecstatic that there ha hasn't been any issues so far. You've gotten like everything first try up until this point. So um, we're going to do a stomp launch. We're going to get down into a little bit of a, a crack here, and. What happens is that when he's going to go into the crack, it's going to juggle him for about a second and a half, two seconds before kicking him out. And if you stomp as the rock deloads, um, you go flying. So we're going to hope for the best right here. I'm going to hope for the best. Looney's going to do everything he can to get this. But big claps if we can land this. And by we, I mean Looney. So because the camera position controls the loads, they're going to be very specific here. Oh, all right. That's all right. I, it could have gone a lot worse. That can go a lot worse than that. That just puts me back down here, and i got to climb up this bit of the mountain again. I, that was me. You know, the nerves are hitting me. I stomped too early. Because the worst thing you want to do is stomp too late. You I just, forget what happens if you stomp too late. You get a little launch, and you fall off the map. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you just fall off a little bit, you just gotta circle around the mountain once more and then go for another try. But um, yeah, if if you like fall medium distance or you know wherever else, it's it's a lot of trouble. So I mean, like I said, this is really tricky because not only do you have to like time the stomps to when the everything's like deloading around you, but you have to have the angle correct as well. Um, so. Take two, let's go. Yeah, this doesn't look too bad from what I'm doing, but if you mess up this angle when you run backwards here, you just get launched off the mountain. Oh, oh okay. Easy. That's all right. Um, I guess the, like, um, the reason that we're doing this is because like I believe the map is like a bit of a curve shape, and what we're doing is that we're a, a bit in the middle of the curve, but we have to like launch all the way to the end of the chapter. And the reason that we can't just run there from out of bounds is that there's a huge gap in the middle where there just isn't anything and you'll fall through the map. So we have to launch far enough that we get over that gap and then we can just run the rest of the way. So it's not just a simple run to the end of the chapter while out of bounds situation. I wish I could say if the setup looked good or not, but I use a different setup. There we go. Nice. Oh. Oh, I don't like this spot. I don't know this spot. This Where spot can sometimes deload. Hold on. All right, we're good now. Awesome. Yo, that's a big clap moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one's always a bit scary. Someone call up the Dead Space remake runner and tell them that we're going to be underestimated. <laughs> I actually don't know. What's the estimate? Two hours, fifteen seconds. Two twenty. Two twenty is the estimate. That's real uh, time. It says two fifteen. Uh, it I'm, says two fifteen on GDQ. Well, I might have said two fifteen. I can't remember if I said two fifteen or two twenty, but it should be fine. Yeah. So that trick saves like what is it? Like ten, fifteen minutes. It, it is something. It's basically, I think, 15 minutes minus however much time it takes to set everything up. So, even again, even if you spend, um, oh, I, I want to say, 
even if you spend like, I don't know, five, five minutes, seven minutes setting it up, you'll still save time. I will add that there's a single caveat that we are skipping a section where you get a shotgun and that saves time. So I don't want to say as long as you get everything done in less than 15 minutes, you save time because you'll bleed a bit of time by not having the shotgun. So. Yeah, not having the shotgun makes some sections later a bit more challenging. Um, and you move in these slow sections, you move a bit faster with the shotgun than you do with the pistol. But it's fine. So this is Jacob's ship that crashed. Um, in the interim of all this, you've like met up with Danny. You've repaired the snowcat. You, well, I'm gonna grab that ammo actually, just for safety. Um, Danny's not here though. Oh uh, yeah, this is <laughs> this cutscene looks a bit weird. Uh, medical supplies. So we're talking to a wrench. <laughs> Dude, the, I, I will say the jump scare is a bit scarier with this glitch. Yep, just like I told you. Very spooky. So yeah, this this skips skips um, a bunch of fine sections, a whole section where we meet the a new enemy type, the ex the little crawling enemies that explode. Um. Skips meeting Danny again, another fight section, more talking to Danny, getting the shotgun, more fight sections, like opening up the path for the the car, talking to Danny for a while on the car as she drives up to here. Like it's a huge skip. Yeah, I think I don't know. It, it, just explaining like Y'all saw what it was. I think it is one of the most impressive things. I mean, the Habitat launch, it's just a launch, you know? But this is just so much put together, and I don't know. Maybe I'm not giving you enough credit, but I think that was, I thought that was pretty sick. Yeah, the hardest part of that trick is definitely the inventory hover at the start, and I'm glad I got that first try. Um, the, the stomp launch, I find that I don't miss it unless I, like, my nerves get the better of me and then I stomp too early because I'm like, what if I stomp too late? Yeah. So this is yeah. Lost 2. Um, almost nothing happens in Lost 2. There aren't even any enemies. This is all story stuff. So we're at the hangar with Danny. Um, we're going to call her ship down, essentially, and there's a lot of talking to Danny. We're going to meet the Warden. Oh yeah, these lovely textures. I, need to know everything I, can. I always laugh when I see these. Wait, what is it? It's like the, the parts of the airlock, but they're just 2D. On my low graphics, they're just like 2D little texture things. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't recognize these. Yeah, so we're gonna get to the top, and we're gonna... I, I, I forget if this is the elevator, but... Yeah, we just get up there, and we have some more cutscene stuff, and uh... We're just gonna loot this. Um, we're only just looking for health kits and ammo. Uh, oh, grip batteries are also really useful. So I'm gonna drop that decoder. Yeah. Because I'm not hitting another shop for the rest of the game. Yeah, money's only really important at the very beginning when you don't have a gun and you don't have the upgrade. After that, we don't really go to stores at all. I mean, maybe you could, but I don't get it. There are some runners will get a second grip upgrade to make some stuff easier, but you don't need it. Yeah, I think the reason that the devs put, you know, this kind of a lull in a section here was so that we would have time to uh, get our heart rate back to normal after doing Lost Skip, so... <laughs> I think they knew a little bit about Lost Skip in the first place. But yeah, we got a little bit of a, a slow section, so... Once again, if y'all have questions on anything that we've been doing... I keep saying we, I'm sorry, Looney, I'm taking the credit away. But... All right, fine. That's so good, dude. Yo, I, I just hit Lost Skip. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Uh, if y'all have any questions, we, we, we're here for you. We're here to get you to run Callisto Protocol. 
say, we get this long elevator. There's not that much happening in this section. We got an elevator into a cutscene. Yeah. Unfortunately, this section is quite, um... Couldn't have made it without your help. This section is pretty much all downtime. Unfortunately, this whole split is. You don't seem too surprised. My favorite level is next. I have... I have not good things to say about the next level. <laughs> Maybe you should try smiling. I am smiling. I'm always smiling. I'm always having a great time when I'm either playing Callista Protocol or hanging out with Looney while he's playing Callista Protocol. What are our favorite skips? Um, my favorite skip is definitely... So, for this... Oh. So this section, I'm going to turn off quick time event. So there's a bunch of accessibility settings in this game. A really nice one is QTE auto complete, which is auto does them, which is faster because it doesn't even bring up the quick time events. But for this section, I need to fail a QTE, so I need to turn that off. Um, as for what my favorite skip is, um, in this game, I probably lost skip. Just because it's just so much that came together to be such a cool skip, and it skips a section that I really don't like. Um, what do you think mine is? Yours? I think you're. you I feel like you're a bangers. You're, like you're a bangers fan. I'm a bangers guy, you know. <laughs> I had the idea of just playing Bangerang by Skrillex after I hit it, but I never remembered to actually do that. Um, it's such a fun skip, and we and haven't done it yet, so... And yeah. someone asked me how long have I been a speedrunner. Um, I have been... I started speedrunning with Dead Space 2 back in early 2013. I'm... What, what the community refers to as this, the boomer of the, the community. Even though I'm older than you? I think, right? We're about the same age. Well, I, I, that, that, that word about is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. How old are you? 26. And I am 26 and a half. So, have that. Uh, I started, um, I can't, I think my first speed run was like in 2016 or 2017. And it was The Binding of Isaac, which is a very RNG heavy game. Um, and then I didn't really speed run at all until um, I saw that Looney, I, I didn't follow Looney at this point, but I saw that a tweet from him that he was going to be running Dead Space 1 at GDQ some marathon. And I was like, I think it was well, I gotta check this GDQ 2021, I want to say, that I did Dead Space 1. I can't remember. My, my memory sucks. So yeah, that's when I started getting into uh, Dead Space and then this game, so. That's why I'm here today. They're both babies? I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that sitting down. <laughs> I, have standing, I have a standing desk. I should use my standing desk more. Oh yeah, on that note, y'all should uh y'all should get some water and stretch. Not that not 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 like leave the stream, but you know. I'm gonna move around. Ten years ago. What what what's your favorite memory in your ten years of speedrunning, Bernie? Me? Oh. I'm not sure. Oh, probably doing Dead Space 1 at, at Shitty Cube. I think after the day, it's going to be hitting Lost Skip at this hotfix. Yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> Much more impressive than Dead Space 1. All right. Um, have we been burning enough time before we have more stuff to explain? Are you going to go for the, uh, the below hover? Yeah, I'll go for it. Um, Jacob! Jacob! Come on. We gotta move. Hurry, so, story update, the warden showed up, well, showed up in a hologram. I was like, you guys aren't leaving, and shot down his own ship so we couldn't leave. And then the ho it crashed into the, into the, what's it called, the hangar or whatever. And we fell a long way. Um, and now we're in the mission below, so we're underneath the current prisons, like prison infrastructure, and we're in the old colony. Oh god. That the prison was built on top of. 
Yeah. Marcus, the original colony. The one yeah, should we just explain, you know... I, I don't know. Do we, do we just explain the story as it happens? Or do we want to explain why there's a colony and what's going on down here? No, we can explain it as it happens. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. No, no fucking way. The story is a bit confusing at times to me, to but also I kind of stink at paying attention. Not anymore. What's it about? Answers. Why did the warden shoot down one of his own? Trying to remember, besides the uh, below hover, what else is there in this chapter? Um, the bull, the hover is like oh, there's the cutscene skip, but if I can get it at the start here, and then there's the hover. But then apart from that, there's no um, skips or anything. It's mostly just about. Uh, getting through this area fast and dealing with all the enemies. There's a lot of straps for different rooms. And then there's the, yeah. like the, the like cheese kill on the boss. Oh yeah. Yeah, th I guess this is a... Uh, I, I, I don't want to say like this is less trick heavy, but more uh, strat heavy. Does that make sense? It's like just knowing how to best clear the rooms, when to checkpoint restart, things like that. Oh yeah, also story-wise, this is the point where, you know, instead of trying to escape, well, Danny's like, we gotta figure out, out what's going on here, so... Now our goal is to get to back to the prison so we can go talk to the warden and, and, uh, straighten the situation out, you know? Are you gonna get it? Yeah, well, let's go, it. gamer. It's This is kind of hard to get with the pistol, it's really easy to get with the shotgun, but if you park correctly, um, you can get ahead of Danny at the end there and actually hit the checkpoint before that cutscene plays. Um, and also, fun fact that you can do at home, in this section, if you reload the checkpoint, that first checkpoint, you can actually sprint during this section. Normally you're supposed to slow walk this whole thing, which is just terrible. Look out! You can also do this uh, upcoming trick at home as well. <laughs> I would not recommend this upcoming trick. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see if uh, I can get it. Just be careful. How many tries are you gonna give it? One. Okay. <laughs> it, it, if, it if, I miss it, if I miss it and fall, then I have to I would have to reload the checkpoint. So Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna get on this edge here. Oh no, I fell. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um what I was trying to do there is if you get right on the edge, you can do another one of those inventory hovers where I walk off the edge and open the inventory and you'll hit a little bit of the broken railing as the inventory opens. And then you can hover across that gap and then go a different way out of bounds to the ladder. It saves like 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some tricks just aren't worth your time, you know? Some of them get one attempt, some of them, you know, they've been there with you for a while, they deserve a few more tries. And it's kind of like you got. Sometimes you gotta cut out some people in your life who are bringing you down and aren't worth your time. So, I think yeah. speedrunning can teach us a lot about the real world. That one, that one is a lot easier to line up if you've got a shotgun. Um, the pistol makes it a lot harder to line up just because the controls are a little more floaty. And if I fall off like that, I can't really retry it because I'd have to reload the checkpoint, which puts you back up the top, and you'd lose more than thirty seconds just getting back down there. Come on, not that far. Fell off. Plus ratio. <laughs> yeah, and this is where you end up when you fall back and bound, so. I think you said like 20 second time save? It's like 20 to 30. Depending on how fast you set it up. I don't think we've put together a community some of best, have we? They're probably mostly my summer pests. What's that? What are you trying to say? Um, apart from the missions that don't have any glitches that I've got the fastest times. Yeah. Well, I suppose you're right. So, we're going to introduce a new enemy here. Um, this enemy is very frustrating and will be the main enemy for the next like 20 minutes of the run. I was gonna say two chapters. Yeah, two chapters. So these enemies are very strong. 
but the, the, the downside is that they're airport blind in that you can sneak past them if you're quiet, but the moment they alert to you, there's nothing you can do to lose line of sight. They will just run you down. Yeah, they're pretty obnoxious. Especially for the speedrun. There are a lot of these enemies in this next area. Fortunately, that one we can just throw into the spikes. A lot of them we can throw into spikes. But this mission is the reason why we get the grip upgrade. So I have more use grip between checkpoints because there's just a lot of these enemies. So this one here, I'm not going to deal with. This checkpoint here. Yeah, this checkpoint deletes that enemy and will also refill the grip that I just used. Yeah, we, we said it once a long while ago, but if you just are out of grip and checkpoint restart, you completely fill it up again. So I don't know if it was an oversight or something else, but we use it a lot throughout the run. And I'll be using it a lot. Yeah, even just like using grip once there and then reloading here because there is a whole swarm of enemies chasing me and they will absolutely rip me to pieces if I let them keep chasing. That one zoomed forward. Um, how long in the game the Roby Bull cutscenes are removed? Uh, it'd probably be like an hour 20-ish. It depends, because if the devs like added cutscene skips in the in a patch like tomorrow, the problem is they've also patched out some of the, um, the skips. So... Yeah, 1984. I, mean, I don't know if it's just like the restream that I'm watching or your Discord screen share, but like those guys are like fast forwarding out of the wall sockets. No, they just do that sometimes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, some people compared these enemies to Last of Us. It's very similar. Should I play The Last of Us or should I wait for uh, it to come to PC or something? No, I haven't actually played through Last of Us either. Alright, I guess that's a question for chat then. Uh, I'm trying to remember what is coming up next. Oh wait. We've uh, got the run to the drill. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, we're Oops. getting there kind of soon, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this chapter is going to be... We get to a drill and it doesn't have the power on, so then we have to go turn on the power, and then we run back to the drill, and then we take that to the colony, which is the next chapter. So. Just making sure I don't get grabbed by any of these snake heads either, because if they grab me, it's an instant death. Also, maybe about, I want to say about an hour ago, but... Maybe about an hour ago, I told you guys I would be quizzing you on how many fuses that we have right now. So put your answers in the chat. Because we, uh... Actually, I think I know. Lindy, do you know how many how many we have? Yeah. And that enemy grabbed me just instantly as soon as I got off the ladder. That's all right. Yeah, this, this one... You know, I think, like... I would say the next chapter is probably the worst as far as like en enemies being annoying, but this one's definitely up there as well. Alright, so I'm gonna reload this checkpoint just because I need my grip back. This is one of the harder areas. There's... There's so many of them. There's so many enemies, and they just... Enemies also like to cheat when they're behind you. <laughs> I, I don't think we need to climb over that box, but... Yeah, this whole thing. Oh, you got a little checkpoint. Are we, are we just going for it? Oh, I'm doing a different strat for this. So, the strat that I'm doing for this is... It's a little risky, because if it messes up, I'm not going to have any grip. But I'm not going to reload these checkpoints. So, all of those enemies are currently chasing me right now. And they're going to fill up that little room I just entered. So, grab this key. And you can already hear them. So, 
So all I need to do is get through, because the enemies won't chase me through this um, gap. They'll only go through the vents. But there's only one vent in that room. So the enemies can only leave that room one at a time. So if it works, there shouldn't be any enemies in this area. And then I can just I did use... I not know about that. I can just use this without the enemies being there. Because if I take any damage while I'm interacting with that key there, it stops it and I have to try to do it again. And then I can just reload to get rid of those enemies afterwards and get my grip back. I can't say I've ever had that problem, but I don't know. I probably had some close calls. I have definitely had that problem with the enemies hit you there. Yeah. Also, the answer for number of fuses we have is two, so... I don't know if there's any mods listening, but we got some timeouts to go. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, this, this is this... a lot more of the same thing. At any point, these enemies behind me can just grab me, and there's just so many of them. There's even another three, like, three there. In case you didn't get the hint. It's not fun. Also, Looney, I think it was around this point in one of my PBs that uh, I started going the wrong way and you were spamming my chat. You were like, turn around, turn around. This is not the right way. Yeah. It is very easy to end up backwards around here. Spit it, the Alright, we're coming up on the generator room soon. I, yeah, generator room is, um... Something. Not one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, we haven't said anything negative this whole time, but... This room, it, it comes close, you know. It's not, it, I definitely wouldn't call it the hardest room in the game, but it is very frustrating. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I'm just going to reload this checkpoint just so I get my grip back. So in order a to big power... Oh, yep. sorry. Right. Well, I was going to say, like, a big reason that this room is frustrating is because there's, like, like right now, Looney's interacting with something and... It's like a couple seconds to like get through the animation. But if you're hit like in the middle of some of these animations, you start the whole entire thing over. And this room up here, I believe has three of those where you want to like pull the lever or pull the lever. And if you get hit during it, it's like, then you got to go take care of those enemies so that you can like do it uninterrupted. I think the first one here is free, but the first one here is three, free. The yeah. third one's not so bad. The hardest one is definitely the second one. And if I get it hit, is. I'm just going to reload because this second generator, um, I'm actually going to reload this checkpoint to just uh, make sure the enemy is consistent. So there's a bunch of enemies down the ladder and there's an enemy up top here. So I'm going to kill that one. Now the hard part is, well, I can't like do anything. I'm just gonna check. Because <laughs> look at that, he ran into the. Yeah, he's already aggroed. Like I didn't do anything, and the blind enemy saw me. So I wouldn't be able to get the panel. So if I tried to kill it, right? If I tried to kill that enemy, then what would happen is every single other enemy in that area would also aggro onto me. Maybe some of them are just pretending. The worst bit is like that. Oh that time yeah. the enemy wasn't even aggroed, but it just because they just random walk when they can't, don't know where you are. It can just walk into you when you're climbing down the ladder, and then it just finds you. And it did it again. It should be noted that like. Combat in this game takes a while, like especially to like just get to get these combos on them. Like, if you have grip, yeah, throw them into a wall. 
and it's like an instant kill. But yeah, if you don't have a grip, down. what? I'm just throwing the enemy to a different spot to see if I can lure the enemies over that way. That's good. As you can see, there's one, two, three. Oh, and an enemy has seen me. You don't even... These blind enemies just don't make sense. Yeah, I don't know what they were going for, but maybe, maybe if you could actually sneak past them, it would be, I don't know, not scary. I don't know what... I don't know what the intended gameplay is. Like, off. Uh, I'm just gonna kill him. The problem is that then aggroes every other enemy. Are we out of grip? I'm out of grip. Any batteries? Nope. Yeah, so this is like, you know. I didn't get that one enemy traded. Like, this is what happens when, you know, you actually have to fight people in this game. It, it's just, you know, a beatdown fest. It can be pretty obnoxious. I really hope that, like, all the bad luck is being put into this room so that that one single room in Colony is all better, you know? Crap. There we go. Not that one. Yeah, that's one of the most rough rooms in the game. And the worst bit is, if you can actually get the thing to activate, it gives you a checkpoint which deletes all the enemies. Yeah, we got one more, but... I think the strat is just to like run past them all and hope for the best. Yeah, unless they start yeah. grabbing me like that. Man, are you on... Like, what difficulty are you on? You better be on the easiest one. I am on the easiest one. It does not seem like <laughs> they are being they are being mean. Uh, oh, please let me use this. Maybe. maybe? Alright, we got it. I am gonna delete you with a checkpoint reload before you hit me in the face. Alright, so power's on. Now the drill is up and going, and uh, we can get going back to the drill. I think for this, yeah, we just. I just run past. I don't know what you this do. Is, this is just another session where you're just gonna run past a whole, like, ridiculous amount of these enemies and just try not to get absolutely, like, wrecked or, like, Jacob randomly you, you trips just, on a rock. Yeah, he stubbed your toe dog. And he Whoa! Oh, what the heck? Did he pull you back on? He pulled me back off when I was in the midair. Oh my god. Enemies, please. Dude. I am getting <laughs> the most aggressive AI out of these blind enemies this run. Oh. Like, I'm smiling right now, but man, this must suck. <laughs> I, would not, I, I would not want to be you right now. All right. All we got to do is get to the little, I don't we're know, slidey section gotta, up yeah, here. Yeah, we just got to get through this gap here. Which isn't too bad. Now, I will say something, and then you can maybe agree with me, but um, <clears throat> or disagree. But when you were having some trouble with uh, uh, Bruv Skip at the beginning of the run, and I think uh, Ignisus mentioned, you know, putting some positive emotes in chat. I saw a certain rat emote come in a lot, and then you got the trick. So I feel like between now and the end of the run, if we have some trouble, maybe some rats would help out. <laughs> All right, so this is the drill. So we have to kill 12 enemies, 12 of the blind enemies. And they say, oh my god, that chest had three grip batteries in it. That was a lot, yeah. Fortunately, um, this exception is very, very easy with grip because you can just I pick up every enemy and throw them off. Which is what I think they, it's what they want you to do. That's why they give you so many, right? Well, the drops from the chests are randomized. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it shows what I know. Uh, which side are they going to come out of? So, four of them come from each side of the drill. But the order that they come out is not the same every time. 
So once one comes out of his side, you know the next three are going to come out of that same side's list. Yeah, we, we're, we're coming up on our first... I don't want to say boss fight, but... Bigger, scarier enemy encounter. Back with front. Which one are we doing? Yeah, there's, there's a new enemy coming up called the Two Head, which um, I think if you try and melee it, it's like it like one hit kills you, so you have to use guns. But Looney's got something else up his sleeve. Yeah, on on the easiest difficulty, you can survive one hit if you're at full health. <laughs> but I am not at full health right now, so. How many are there in the run? There's like, there's like, I don't want to say the run, but me four in the game. There's four in the game. Yeah. Just fighting one. There'll be if I can get all the skips, I'll only fight two of them. This one and then one in tower. Oh, are you, are, are you gonna? Well, I guess, I guess if we go for bangers, we skip that one. But yeah. All right. Yeah, so it, we kill if, the if last get, one. Here we go. We kill the last one. It gives us a checkpoint. We reload this checkpoint because otherwise you got to wait a while for the boss to show up. So this is the two head. Why do they call it that? I don't know. So I'm going to run at him. I'm gonna dodge. Run at him. Dodge. Dodge this way a little bit. Why are you standing by the console, dude? It's not cooperating right now. Yep. All right, there we go. Wait, whoa. <laughs> I've never had that one. So you can get him up onto stuff you can't path off of, or you can just dodge. Because every time you dodge, he steps backwards. So you can dodge and just keep dodging hits until he either dies by standing on those boxes or just falls off the edge. Good stuff. And now we are on the colony, which. Uh, with the exception of my favorite trick, this is my least favorite chapter. Danny, I made it. This is... Well... Where are you? Some kind of service tunnel. I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, but this there's just a single room that is going to be a massive pain. And if Looney... There, there yeah. is a room in this mission that is basically a harder version of that generator that I just had to do. Yes. That's what, I'll, that's what we'll say. I'm at the colony. Where are you? See that light tower? Meet me there. Light tower. Got it. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but how much time does Bangers save? It's like four or six minutes? No, it's only like two or three. What? I think. Pretty sure it's only like two or three minutes. Man, we should, we should not be putting up with Bangers if it's only like two or three minutes. <laughs> so... Someone says Looney's showing off the sauce. I don't know what that means, but, you know. <laughs> All right, so we've got more one. of these blind enemies in this area. It's about this point that the blind enemies start to lose their, um, start to get a bit, at least casually, a bit uh, repetitive. Because you go through that whole other chapter with them, and then there's a whole other chapter that's full of them. Yeah. For, for this section right here, Looney is checkpoint restarting, one for grip, but also... We have to get over to this oh thing in the wall goodness. quickly enough before enemy, any, any enemies get close. Because uh, if you can get over there quickly enough, you can just grab this key card. But if there are enemies that are too close right, by... Oh, nice. If enemies are too close by, the game will say, like, no, nah, you can't do that, dog. There's there's danger afoot. So yeah, that's if, part one of this. If you get unlucky and an enemy chases you too much, you get to there and then the game's like, there's enemies. You can't do this right now. All right, so this is the hard room. So... Oh. Trying to kneecap that enemy, but it's not working. There we go. This is another situation where the shotgun makes that a lot easier, because the shotgun can just one-hit that enemy. Like, one, like, take off its legs. The reason I wanted to take off its legs is so that... So first off, I gotta hit this without getting hit. Um, and then I gotta hit this elevator button. Please. I, 
No. Wanna like run, run a lap? Yeah, there's just like so many of them. So what I do is if I'm in this situation, yeah, I just like run around a little bit, have them follow me, and that gives some distance. It's it's really dumb that it's like uh, maybe that's good enough. It's obnoxious that it's like enemies are close by and Jacob's like I'm Fortunately I have extra per batteries, so let's go. Yeah, that's that, that's like my least favorite section in the whole game. Like outside of just hard tricks. Yeah, if you don't have extra, like I got heaps of extra grip batteries from the random drops on the drill fight. If you don't have extra grip batteries there and just have to melee fight them all, it takes forever. Yep. All right, so now we've got um, the last out of bounds skip in the game. Uh, we call this one bangers. Hell yeah. You want me to explain it or he's going to go for it? Um, I can explain it. So. This is more of the camera going through walls to unload levels, but this one, we actually have to get the enemy to hit us to get the camera to go through the wall. So unfortunately, unless he wants to grab me, um, this clipping out here is random. And you lose 20 to 30 seconds every time it doesn't work. Squid says, is it called Bangers and Mash? It was, actually. There's actually an extended version that we call Bangers and Mash. Um, because the first two skips in the game were Brov Skip and then this. And then we were jokingly just naming everything after, English like, stuff. yeah, UK stereotypes. <laughs> Especially because the person who found them was from the UK, so... Well, th that, that was... <laughs> That was the original thought. They were like, are you just calling this well, uh, okay. Brov Skip? Cause this, this skip was called Bangers because it skips a really cool song and someone's like, hey, that song's a banger. And then the, the person from the UK got upset because they thought we were making fun of him from being from the UK. Which, which is not something to make fun of someone for, but... But yeah, the, the extended version is And Mash or Bangers and Mash, but there is not currently a lineup for it, so... I don't know. Looney, you're not going to go for it, are you? I can go for it once. It doesn't... Go for it once. I'm going to get out of bounds it, first. It could be funny. Yeah, unfortunately, like, when you are being, like... When you're hit by the enemy, there's a few things that can, you know... You can get caught by the wall, like you'll see like the wall reload in, and if you're on the wrong side, you gotta restart it. If your camera is too high or too low, the floor that you're standing on, the little rooftop, that will deload. So you have to make sure that your camera's at the right the right height. So like the the the, the, the spot that Looney's putting his cursor on, like obviously like people gotta find a little setup. Oh like, damn it, I had Oh man. Once you get but, out of bounds like that, you need to crouch or the level's gonna unload and the game wouldn't let me crouch fast enough. Yeah, it's finicky is the word of the day for a lot of these tricks. The the worst part is when the enemy hits you, this is the reason why I have to reload every time. Because the level load changes, the enemy actually disappears. So I can't just like sit here and get hit until I clip through the wall. Uh the backup is not doing it, but that's not that bad. Yeah, the backup is I have to watch some cutscenes into a boss fight. Um, there is a quick kill for the boss, but it's a little random. And with just a pistol, the boss can be a bit slow. I'm not concerned with the boss either. It's mainly because I need to save ammo. I need a lot of ammo for the final boss of the game. But this yeah, is all if right. we. If we uh, do the two-head fight, we can we can show the funny little quick kill, but... I mean, I can try it. I'm not very good at it. Hand me the controller. <laughs> yeah, this is another one of those tricks where it's like... The, the speedrun is done um, in-game time, so like... You only lose, like Looney said, 20, 25 seconds each time. So in an actual run... 
you have many attempts to go for this um, before you're actually losing time, but yeah, I, I imagine if like this was an actual world record run, you would have probably restarted by now. Oh. The wall pulled me back in. This is, yeah, this is like the gatekeeper to finishing runs, this trick. This is another one that's given the, the game the reputation as being cursed. Because like, even if you get past all of the hard stuff at the start of the game, you still got to get past this. Yeah, it, it's something, to say the least. Unfortunately, the trick is not over once I flip out, but... I it's, like, it's just like Grub Skip, where there's part one and part two. I have practiced this a lot. Oh. There we go. All right. Let's go. So we have to be very, very careful about camera placement and, like, where we're aiming. Because, like... Oh, what oh, was man. that? All right. Yeah, if, you, if, if it's, like, a tiny bit off, then... The whole, like, you saw, like, right there, the floor will just, like, disappear from underneath you. I don't think that was my camera placement. I think... I don't know what happened there. The level loads are a bit different from what I'm usually expecting right now. What's this? It's... Ah... Yeah, so like, even if you clip out, sometimes the leather floor can just unload under you, and then you just fall. Yeah, we were, we were never supposed to be there. Making me second guess myself because I said earlier that this is my favorite trick, but now I'm like remembering just how bad it can be. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'll find something else. I'll find another fun trick to do. What's my ammo situation? 62 rounds. We could go and fight the boss. This doesn't work next to you guys. You gonna do the boss fight? I might. I'll give this a couple, I'll give this one or two more goes. It's just, yeah, if I fight the boss, if I don't get the quick kill, I have to use my pistol. I'm going to be short on ammo for the final boss. I mean, for the quick quick killer, you can just, like, keep dodging until he dies. You know, I don't think there's, like, a situation where it's, like, if you mess up one of the dodges, it's over. If the enemies get on me, because I don't have a weapon to kill them fast, it's a problem. Oh, there's, like, other enemies that just roll in? Yeah, they do. What? It just like teleports you to the side. That's the worst one is when you go fully out of the wall and then the game just teleports you back inside. This game is a criminal because Lily was robbed. <laughs> it's like that one meme. It's like uh, so-and-so is no longer my... The friendship ended with so-and-so. This person is now my best friend. Oh. All right, we know the boss. This isn't working. That's all right. Friendship ended with uh, bangers. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we gotta go do this, but bangers is like a, a cool trick to watch because it's just, I don't know, all these things loading in and unloading around you. So it's very interesting to see, but I don't know, we got we got a fun little Danny cutscene instead. Alright, so just gonna grab this fuse.
After this boss fight, we just have um, one little running section, and then we're basically on the tower, aren't we? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so... This whole... I don't even know what that is. Why are you bouncing? Why are you... <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, this game! The game just wants me to grab that log instead of going for the ladder. Yeah, the glitch gods are mad. I think we got some, we got like the three leather agencies that are watching the stream, ha hacking the run. <laughs> Luckily, I think at this point, or at least after this boss fight, the, uh, the, the run is pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, this is the last like odd thing in the run. Once you fin once you get past um, bangers, you're finishing the run pretty much. Yeah. You can't make me. I will say, I mean, there's like a there's like a fast way to do the final boss, but I I haven't learned how to do it because I'm goofy like that. So, I, 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 how how fast is like the fastest one you can do it? What's the you fast? You can do cycle? it in a couple, uh, like two minutes, less okay. or less. Um. It's not as fast with just the pistol, but you can still do it really quickly. Okay. Yeah, now we get to go look at all the old, uh, the old colonists that are dead. I'm sorry. I tried to protect you. You didn't deserve this. Danny. Hey, Danny. Get away from me! We were talking about maybe some story gaps earlier okay. with like, how is it that Elias got shot so far away, you know, when he was like, I don't know, put into the airlock, sure? but you think if you were Danny, you'd be able to hear this thing coming up behind her, wouldn't you? Wait, where is it? Reliving their memories. Sorry, I have the stream muted. How much dialogue is there? there was an outbreak. That's quite a bit. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped the gun on that, but Just like I don't the know. These guys, are, these guys are pretty big. You can see it now back there. Oh, wait, that's it? Yeah, that's a two head. It doesn't come up like as like that unless you're on low low graphics. But yeah, that's a two head there. It's like stuck in the floor. <laughs> These aren't accidents. Oh, that's so funny. There's a pattern. Yeah. Oh, th that's how it's supposed to look, I guess. Yeah, really funny how these uh, blind enemies can always track us down. Yet this guy is just chilling in the back, like I don't know, I'm just waiting all this time. All right, let's go. Right. Just in case I have to deal with the other enemies, I would like to have some grip. Alright, so I'm going to try and get this quick kill. So I'm going to come in here. Line it up. Yeah, just like the last one died on a box, we can hopefully get this one with a little door frame. Oh, that looks good. There we go. Let's go, gamer. <laughs> so yeah, it just gets stuck in that door frame a bit and then dies. Yeah, he took he took he took he went through the, the doorway to, to hell, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just thought of that one. Come on, Danny. I need you to open the door. They knew a way to reach the surface. So this is where I would have landed. The out of bounds puts you up there, and then you can do some Platforming across the the railings. So what's it like? Weird. Yeah, and and the bangers and mash. It's a it's a little bit further up still, right? Yeah, bangers and mash. When you first land here, if you do the out of bounds, this cutscene doesn't trigger, and you can keep going and try to skip the next section. So we just got one last section with the blind enemies that I'm going to run through. That and then the run gets fun again. The run's always fun. What do you mean? I've, you know what? You're right. I've been smiling this whole time. Yeah, we're getting, we're going back to the prison, so 
If you guys like that section of the game, hold on to your hats. Hold on to your socks. In fact, just keep all your clothes on. We're, we're, we're going to a fun section. Oh, I guess we also have the, the, the lore explaining section coming up, which I which I struggle with a little bit sometimes, but this is where we see the big scary fish. Yeah, the, the fish monster thing. It wasn't there before. Yeah, so lore wise, there's like some... We're on... What this is? This, what, what moon is? Oh, this is Callisto. <laughs> Callisto. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what moon are we on? Uh, so we're on Callisto, and there's a big underground sea. I forgot the name of the game. Um, we're uh, there's like a big under, I don't know, like big sea that these uh, people found, and there's a scary monster. But the monster had some parasites that made it into a, I don't know, mutated scary monster. And we started studying the little leeches, the little uh, larvae. Um, that were on there, and we found out that it like does hyper evolution on things that it infects. So, the idea is that these monsters that we've been fighting are just uh, hyper evolved humans. Uh, at least that's what the hope is. So, I don't know. I, oh yeah, there's there like a patient zero that was like super strong, but still had like human traits. Um, and we're trying to. The, the experiment, the protocol is trying to recreate those conditions and get another patient like like that, you know, a super evolved, yeah. scary Tr human. Yeah. Trying to figure out how to make people infected without losing the intelligence. So, because there's spoiler for later in the game, there's like a whole thing like, we need to mutate to survive in the stars. Yeah, it's something. Also, we're learning that uh, Jake, Jacob's role in all of this is that he's just like a space courier. He tra he like transports these medical supplies around. But as we're, as he's about to learn, I, I think he knew the whole time. But he he, he knows, forgot. but he's in denial the whole time. Yeah, uh, and he's like, oh man, was, I've been. He was transporting the uh, yeah the the larvae to infect people. Yeah, but he was doing it for these people. I think he was just like, hey, I'll move your stuff. I don't care what I'm moving, you know? This The plot of this game is very much like the plot of a Resident Evil game. Yeah, so all you people saying Dead Space story, Dead Space, get out of here. This is a Resident Evil game. It, it right. gets absolutely zany at the end. So we got a checkpoint here. It skips the rest of this cutscene. So this is our friend Captain Ferris. He's gotten a bit bigger now. So, unless he grabs, which he did immediately. You can cheese this section. You can stun lock, yeah, you can stun lock Captain Ferris. You can do this trick at home. Just whack him and then aim, and then whack him and then aim. Yeah, this is the uh, supposed hyper evolved human, but he doesn't know how to get out of this. I don't play fighting games, but I'm pretty sure this is what they call a true combo. So that's the fight. We just unlock him until he grabs us and it triggers the cutscene. He can't. The only thing that Ferris can do to get out of the, the stun lock is if he grabs you, which is what he did right at the start. It happens sometimes. So now we've got the classic part of a Resident Evil storyline where one of the, the, the friends of the main character got infected and now we have to go into the lab to find the cure. Yeah. <laughs> we made it. Danny? Danny? Yeah, what if, uh, what if instead of these monsters being like... You know, the way to get to, like, the next level of evolution, it was just, you know, eating your vegetables. That would be a really good story for the kids, a really good lesson. No, no. You're gonna be okay. This isn't fair. I promised I would stop them. Fuck. Alright, never mind. Well, we're going back to the prison, and that's what's important. No, no, no. 
No, 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 okay, that's not gonna happen. Hey, yeah, so, now Danny's infected, <laughs> I thought you so. were muted for a sec. Oh, I'm not muted. Um, we're gonna go try and find the Warden. See if he's got a way to, to undo the infection. Yeah, and that's basically going to be the story for the next run, or for the rest of the run, is just save Danny. So, another checkpoint there. Skips that rest of that cutscene. Let's find out. Yeah, so earlier when, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but you remember how we have those fuses that we stole and then didn't use, and now we just have them in our back pocket? We're going to use one of them to completely bypass a section where we have to do a two-head fight, which yeah. is very epic. There's the shoe. That's where we rescued Danny earlier in the game. So, infections spread even worse. But the warden is the warden's still here, so we're gonna go after him. Oh yeah, um, I, I guess to, to answer the question that I don't think anyone asked, but you know, maybe it was on your mind, is what is the Callisto Protocol? And it's basically release these monsters or spread the infection amongst all the prisoners uh, so that we can have a more in-the-field experiment so we can try and, uh, I don't know, Get that patient, that patient alpha, or what, what? What's its name? Subject alpha. Subject alpha. So, yeah, because I don't know. Behind the scenes, before the game story started, the warden had been like experimenting on the prisoners, putting them in a lab, trying to put them under certain circumstances to uh, have them hyper evolve, but it just wasn't happening. So the warden's like, I have an idea. Let's uh, let's just. <laughs> Let's just kill everybody, and uh, <laughs> that's basically what's been going on the whole game. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding yeah, so the warden's trying to regain control of the prison now, so he puts us back in our cell. Don't ask me why. There's not very many people left. It's just us. Um, so we're getting some story stuff. This is the doctor. You would have seen the doctor in the holograms before. You also see the doctor at the start of the game in the 15 minute long cutscene. Oh, yeah, she gives us the cool neck chip. Yeah. Man, I, I completely forgot just how much of this, this, like, string in the story is just, uh, I don't know, sitting around and waiting for people to talk. Yeah, this section is. But now we've got control, so. We're back in our cell. Unfortunately, the mattress isn't there, so we can't just, like, stomp out of bounds again. Have we, have we like, tried to do that here? <laughs> I have. <laughs> so, here, inside there, there's another two head boss fight. But we got a fuse from earlier in the game, so we don't have to go in there to get one. We just use the one we got way earlier, like, over an hour. Like an hour and a half earlier in the run. And we can just skip that section. Alright, so now we've got the deadly hallway. There are a lot of enemies in this hallway. It is not fun. Especially if that's someone going to grab him. Yeah, you, you, like, if you get. I, I think it like there's a best case scenario you just don't stop running because if anything like hits you at all then it gives all the rest of the enemies like enough time to come in and uh, mess with you yeah what kind of stuff <laughs> this this hallway snowballs very quickly <laughs> yeah that that's the phrase I was looking for oh my gosh. That's all right. We can delete all those enemies and get my grip back. Some bad stuff. This section is also can snowball really quickly. This one is not as bad as the first hallway. 
The one that gets me is the one that comes up the ladder. Because I don't think they ever do that in the rest of the game, like having an enemy just like popping up. Uh, enemies, I don't think they pop up ladders very often, but they will chase you up ladders. I feel like that, that, that's a scripted event though, right? That one is, yeah. Okay. So here's another section. We're supposed to go through that vent over there and deal with some of the invisible enemies to get a fuse, but we've got, a, we've got an extra one, so we're just going to use this. And that's the last one we have? That's the last fuse, yeah. And now we're going on to the last two head fight of the game. Indeed. So I got to kill a spitter first. So I'm going to run this way, grab this spit up, throw him a little bit, and then throw him into these spikes. So I'm going to run down this right corridor. Two heads can spawn over there. I might be able to send here. Dodge him. You see there's this fan here. Look out! And he's gone. Nice. nice. And then there's other enemies in the room too, so I'm going to reload to get rid of those. And I think that's, that's the, the last the combat, right? That's the last enemy before the final boss. Defensive yeah, so now we're just chilling now. So now we got a bit more story stuff happening before we get to the final boss. There's a lot of there's a lore dump about like the whole subject alpha situation. At the heart of the prison. And then what the warden's plan is. And then you find out oh, the whole novel section where you find out the warden's part of the Illuminati, the space Illuminati. Yeah, when when I first got to that part in the game, I was like I was like, man, this is uh they really jumped the shark with the ending here. That's a sorry, that's a Happy Days reference, Looney. I don't know if you ever watched that show. I have not. Oh, it's, it's, an, it's an American thing from the seventies. Well, anyway, this is where we're learning about uh how to get the cure. So this doctor, she has uh one part of the chemical, but the other part to synthesize the uh you know, oh, what do you call it? The cure. No we have to get mean. some serum or some liquid from the, uh, the subject no. alpha. Like so we got to go up to the warden, talk to that uh, yes. subject alpha, and uh, then we can save Danny. Oh, also, she's do he, she's going to do this thing where uh, we get like some of... Uh, we, I think Jacob's talking about like he wants to understand what's going on, so he wants to find out what what the, everything's about. So she links um, the the core, the thing in your neck, with Danny's one. Uh, so you start sharing memories. Because Danny was on the outbreak that was on Europa. Yeah, and she lost her sister there, so that's why she's really mad at all these it's people over here, Portugal. but she doesn't know that Jacob During was partially the responsible. Colonists so that's a little secret. Subject zero. Demonstrated a unique ability to synthesize the biofish, to control it. Yeah, I heard in the recording something about bigger, stronger. The next phase of human evolution. Dude, whenever he says like bigger and strong, and like stronger right there, now, I'm just like, I can't stop, I can't help but think about the Daft Punk song. <laughs> Hoping to recreate Subject Zero as Subject Alpha. By releasing the virus into the prison? As he would say, evolution doesn't happen in the lab. Yeah, it's just lore dumpy stuff, okay, so. There's no way he can cover this up. He's not acting alone. Yeah, and then no. she, she starts to tell us about the Illuminati, and then they seek to control the program. Danny starts to wake up. She's, she's waking. Yeah, when well, we get the uh, careful, the cutscene skip the ability, the I hope that, you know, it reinvigorates the run a little bit, but it's like you were saying, Looney, I think that what about you? it's going to be, a, I'm, I think like it's going to be really good for glitchless runs, well. but it might be a more of like a coin toss down if it like saves enough time in a, a glitched run. 
It'll, it would still probably save time, but because some of the tricks have been patched out, then it won't save quite as much time as it would otherwise. Yeah. What happened? Where am I? It doesn't matter. We got what we need. Now let's finish right. this. Come on. How are you feeling? Like something's inside my head. So we're not done with the lore dump section, but we actually get control for a little bit here. There's a fun little annoying section where you can just randomly lose eight seconds in this next bit. Yeah, there was um, there was another runner who was asking about like, oh, where's all my time loss? Because I think he got like a 220 something on his PB and I got like I forget what it was, like a 215 or a 210. He's like, what? How'd you save that much time? Was that like your first run? So I like put our splits side by side to like show him where he's losing time. And there's this one split here where we're about to get into it, and it really is just like walk down a little road, and there's a cutscene, and that's it. And I was looking at it, and I'm like, how did you, how did you lose like 12 seconds on walking like down a little road here? But yeah, I, I forget what causes it to actually happen. It's um, what happened back there? you just can't run sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you can run a bit earlier. Oh, yeah, it's very goofy. Oh, and you trust her? Choice. So now we're in the, the warden's fancy suite. I don't think it looks that cool. Did this one next to the... No. That's, I didn't get it. Data transfer complete. Oh, uh, maybe. I can move pretty quick. Danny? Yeah, sometimes... Like this Sometimes you don't get quite sucked into that, and then you can just run really fast. Oh, so this is the slow one? Um, I'm not sure. This might be like a middle one. Yeah, so this is Jacob, you know... This, this oh, character, that's his, that's his though, though with, yeah, this is his co-pilot that dies in the start of the game, when the ship crashes. Yeah, and he's like, oh, you have to realize that we knew about this the whole time. You knew what you were doing, you know? So, it's none of our business. this is when Jacob's learning that, like, oh my goodness, this is my fault, so. Yeah, see, he dropped, they've dropped one of the, the canisters. And that's what caused the outbreak on Europa, which is how Danny's sister died. So Jacob's realizing that it's his fault that, um, Danny lost his stuff. Was our fault. Yeah, and a big theme throughout the game is, uh, so I think like some people are just trying to like convince Jacob. It's like, dog, you're not really a nice person. You're just doing whatever you need to to uh, escape from here. You're just using these people to, I don't know, get the ship. And you were using Elias. Like, you're not selfless. This is all about you and your survival. So, it's gonna. This is like a turning point for. Uh, a turning point for him and his uh yeah. his journey. D Danny and Jacob have a conversation about does Danny cut the thing out of Jake out of um, Elias's neck after he died. Jacob's like, how could you do that? She's like, you've done the same thing to people. He's like, not someone I knew. And she's like, you don't know anything about this guy. You met him like an hour ago. And he, he, you met this random murderer an hour ago, and he said he could help you get out of the prison. So I think we are mostly at the done end of the lore dump here. <laughs> so far. Wait, what? I've got my splits open. I golded. I just golded tower two by a second. Oh, no, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> There's just random time save you can get on tower two because you can walk yes, faster. Can. We're almost there. No, I can feel it. Uh, hear it <laughs> in my head. All right, and now we get to go to the end of the run. For the final boss fight. Chat, you got to put your guesses in right now. Who is Subject Alpha? I can't take care of myself. Okay. No one's going to get this. You think you got enough ammo for this? Um, I, I don't think... I've got what is that? 74 bullets, I think that says. I don't know, the text is illegible. It should be enough. 
If I get the quick kill version, then it shouldn't matter. Like, I shouldn't need that much, but if I miss a... If a throw doesn't damage the boss, then I will need that much ammo. Alright, so... This is where we talk about the whole, like, Illuminati bit. Fear, Solitarius, or whatever. They've all got these weird masks. Where's the Alpha? Just give me the goddamn antidote. I'm not gonna let her die. Your friend. <laughs> I've been watching. Yeah, Looney, you mentioned you fixed your light you settings, but your so -called when they were worse, the the warden was just like completely like as white as this light here. Yeah, it was like the warden's black suit would glow as white as the lights that are in this room. It is so funny. And it would go, it would depend on the camera angle, because then you'd have one camera angle where he's got a black suit, and then one camera angle where he's glowing. And it was real bad. It's about life. Our future lies out there. Yeah, and the game does look not very good with these low graphics, but unfortunately I need to pump out as much frame rate as I can. So... We have to evolve if we are to survive. Now, you'll all see why. Proof. You know, all things and considered, we are not that far off from estimate. No, I, I wanted, to, I made sure I made the estimate pretty generous because I, I kind of like went in, it's like, okay, what are the big like four tricks? I'm gonna assume I'm gonna miss five minutes on each one. Okay. <laughs> In fairness as well, I think the original lesson it was 220, so it's all... There's like a question mark at the end of the estimate we have on the screen. <laughs> it's alright, this will be under that. But sure, all I've got to do is beat this boss. Plus, we started here early too, so I mean... You, you, you have time. It's just things like the, you know, like, bangers trick that just, like, doesn't work sometimes. That's alright. You know, I wish I wish that. I had lats like that. Yeah. All right, we gotta do the uh, the same thing where you just whack him and then aim to stun lock him. Also, when I ask people to guess who is the uh, subject is alpha, someone said Peter Griffin, and I, I'm saying right now I would pay like fifty bucks for that mod. Oh my goodness, he's just grabbing. Dude, you're getting murked. So, the stun lock, the only way that... Come on. The only <laughs> way that he can get out of it is if he doesn't grab. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Alright, here we go. What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Dude, get good. <laughs> you know, speedrunning is about fun, and I'm having fun right now. I'm finding out new things go. about this boss. <laughs> no escape this time. Now, this is how it feels to chew five guns. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna hit him with our invisible shotgun. Wait, do we have an invisible shotgun? Yeah. Sick. running. Get this barrel. Throw a barrel. Get in the barrel. Well, we we'll get this explosive. Throw an explosive.
Nice. Yeah, it's very convenient that these uh, people just left explosive barrels all around. And there's also explosive enemies that I need to grab. Where's the other one? There he is. This is basically it, by the way. We just have to, like, keep throwing things at him. Also, I forget if these enemies can one-hit you. Grab! Oh my god, I'm out of grip. Alright, that's a problem. Oh my god! <laughs> I was not prepared for that. I was not prepared for that either, because Jacob decided <laughs> to melee instead of shoot. <laughs> that is not a barrel. Man. Just gotta keep shooting them. Yeah, the exploders are obnoxious. I think if they just crawl up on you, like... I don't know about casual difficulty, but they can just, like, one-hit you. Uh, I, I, I didn't grab that one. Oh, you shot it. Are you serious? Jerk. Okay, we can go out into the open now, because I'm out of explosives. Except for those guys. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm out of grip again. Alright. Is this gonna be handgun the rest of the time? Yeah. Yeah. This is why I said you'd want a lot of handgun ammo for this. Yeah. With the um the shotgun route, there was a really cool strat that was found where you could like s switch your weapons really really quickly, so you can go like shotgun handgun shotgun handgun. And, I don't know. It looks pretty sick, but we only got this little pistol, little trusty little trusty handgun. I forget how many times you have to break the uh, little face shield. Also, maybe you got some grip? I forget I forget what the regeneration time is. It's pretty long. Where is that oh, guy? Alright, make sure I hit that. <laughs> I'm low health. Yeah, everyone's making the get a grip jokes in chat. All right, oh, here. let's go! Oh my goodness. Ideally, yeah, I held the barrels for a little too long trying to make sure I, got, I hit him, but ideally you have a grip battery there, and then the fight becomes really easy. Gross. So yeah, one of the things the doctor says to you, it's like once you get the, the sample, the warden's going to want the sample more than anything. He'll do anything to get it off you. Hold on, he doesn't really do, he just asks. He's like, just, can I have it? <laughs> Ferris was weak. An imperfect vessel. But in that sample is the key to Give unlocking it. a centuries old. What if he said please? I feel like that might have That's changed the ending of the game. It's progress. Wait, does he say please? It no. Belongs to me oh. Now. Never mind then. No, 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 I don't think so. Please. This is no time for false heroics. Leave the sample and walk away. There's an escape pod up there. To take you back to the life you once had. We can both have I don't think they ever really said All right, where. So we got a little bit more. From. There's one last section before we hit time. I'll tell you what I want. Let's get through this cutscene. I want my sister back. Fuck yeah, cutscene, then run down the hallway. So yeah, turns out the warden was doing the classic hologram talking to other holograms. It's kind of like what now. Zoom Zoom meetings are, you know? <laughs> no. This time you do. Let's go. Why can't he take a sample from the corpse next to himself? A That's a good question. 
all this to say one maybe because he needs the uh don't think the vial that the, the doctor had the I don't know. the next phase as for you self-destruct sequence initiated goodbye miss Nakamura. and mr lee i do hope you've enjoyed your stay at black iron all right so we got time coming up once i run up here I wish we could run this fast the entire game. Yeah. That would be sick. Then the below chapter would be a lot easier. Alright, time is in about... 7, 5 seconds, something like that. Uh, yeah. Actually, wait. I'll so, actually 3, 2, 1... And that's time. Let's go. GG. God, your HP is so low. Shit, <laughs> I almost died in the boss. <laughs> there's just one. And there's only one escape pod. So yeah. Give it to Danny. Yeah, it ex everything explodes at the end. This is a Resident Evil game. You know, with, uh, with the exception of uh, bangers, I think that was pretty, pretty all right. Yeah, that went pretty well. Um, what are you talking about? Some of the tricks in this game, you can only you can only expect them to fail a bunch when you're trying to do it. No. You got lost, Skip, though, so I feel I like that's the biggest, the biggest dub of the run. Jacob! Jacob! Right, this is more story. Um, Danny gets Jacob's memories because the memories were linked earlier. She also gets some. Um, he gave her a sample. He learned more about me, and I learned more about him. And then it sets up for DLC. In the chaos of the moment. Very cool stuff. He had also given me the evidence I was looking for all oh, that was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Definitely. Thank GG. you all. Yep. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for letting me show this off. It's your lovely show crisis absolutely uh yeah thanks for having me yeah as well while Ross. we're uh watching the end here uh, a couple things uh for one do you have any shout outs you'd like to give it anyone um just shout outs to the Callisto community there's not that much of us because this runs a bit cursed but they're all awesome <laughs> um shout outs to shark hat and the people coming up next i do a lot of runs with them because i'm also a dead space feeder now so they're pretty cool people. Go check them out. And yeah. And it. as well, if anyone wanted to uh, watch you do more Callisto or anything else, uh, where can they find you on Twitch or anywhere else? Um, I am twitch.tv slash livingloonybin. I'm also on Twitter at livingloonybin. So that's pretty much it. Just check me out. I run this game. At the moment, I'm grinding this game, trying to get a sub 150, but... Uh, I also speed around the Dead Space games. That's the games I'm most known for. Um, and yeah, all random, random games. And yeah, there's like a flash of Jacob. I don't know. They wanted DLC. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you both again for the uh, amazing run of Callisto Protocol. It was fun kind of seeing how broken this game can really get. Uh, as well, uh, we're going to be getting ready for our next run of the night. We're going to be going to more, uh, more, I guess, try, what, fun space horror game? Uh, I thought it was a fun, fun way of doing the night, so. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back really quick. Uh, but before we do that, just, you know, stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs. We'll be setting up for Dead Space. So be right back. All right, everyone. Welcome back from the break, and hope you've been enjoying the show so far. Uh, we have... Well, we finished one of our two runs for the night. We have our second run coming on up, and we'll be continuing the theme into space. Uh, I've had Dead Space on in the past. However, if you do not know, in the beginning of this year, 2023, we actually had a remake of the original Dead Space game, which added a lot of, I guess, new just new spins on the game, really. It was pretty good uh, overall, and it's a pretty interesting speed, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think it's quite similar to, if you've never seen a Dead Space 1 run we've had on the show in the past, it is quite glitchy. And I think this one is as well. 
Anyway, uh, we're going to be getting into our last run of the night. We're going to be having Dead Space 2023 with Sharkat87. Take it away. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm Sharkat. We're going to be jumping right into the run here. So uh, we're going to start the time when I select the save file here. So we're going to go ahead and do that in five, four, three, two, one, go. So right off the bat, you might have noticed that uh, that save there said chapter seven. Um, basically, uh, if you overwrite an autosave in the game, um, it'll, like in your files, it'll still let you load it, but it won't update the uh, information of the one you're overwriting. Like in the game, it still thinks it's a chapter seven save, but it's really uh, at the start here. Now the intro for this game is about 10 minutes long. Um, it's very cool, very, you know, faithfully redone, uh, a lot of detail, you know, it's great, but uh, it is very slow and you don't really do a whole lot, you mostly just kind of hold W and wait. So we voted as a community to uh, skip that by just loading the first autosave you get, that checkpoint, um, right at the chase sequence, so we kind of just jump straight into the action here. Um, now we're going to be uh, getting our first gun here, the plasma cutter, and you're right away going to see a big piece of movement tech in this game, which we call a toggle aim sprint. Um, basically, uh, well, so so it's called toggle aim sprint because I am uh, using toggle aim. By default, um, you have to hold the button down. And basically we figured out that if you're holding down the aim button, the game doesn't let you run. But with toggle aim on, I'm not actually holding the button down. I've just, I've just clicked it once. Uh, and now I'm just, uh, and I'm still aiming. And so since I'm not holding sprint down, it actually lets me sprint while aiming. Now, that's useful by itself because it means I can shoot, reload, grab objects, things like that, uh, while moving at full speed. But not only that, you actually run about 16% faster while aiming as opposed to just regular running. So like, this is my normal aim speed, right? It's pretty slow. And then, you know, we got our, our sprint speed here, and then we got this, which is even faster. Um, it just makes the movement way more smooth overall. Um, if you want to try it at home, it's pretty easy, actually. You just have to turn toggle sprint off, so you hold shift to run, and uh, toggle aim on. And there you go, it just lets you run while aiming. It's pretty funny. Um, so now we have to wait here for uh, these two other characters, Kendra and Hammond, to talk to us. Now, you're going to see a little bit later, we are going to skip a lot of these rig cutscenes by pulling up other logs and things to close them, and it will skip them. Unfortunately, even though we can skip this uh, video, it doesn't actually uh, make this scene any faster. Uh, the door's unlocking is tied to the character's animations over on the other side there. So if you skip the video, you'll you'll just have to wait anyway. Um, and thank you for the good luck, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Looney. GG's on your run, dude. All right. So uh, for chapter one, we have to fix the tram. Now, uh, another really important thing is... Oh, and we're picking up the stasis module here to let us slow things down. It's also pretty important. But uh, the way we are going to progress through the game is uh, by completing all the objectives. The game essentially has like a quest system where uh, you have to complete each thing in order to advance and it constantly updates whatever your objective is. Um, there are side objectives, side missions, things like that. Um, we're not going to do uh, all the extra missions. But uh, the reason I bring it up is because um, it affects the, the routing a little bit. So there are a lot of skips in this game. But we can't just skip straight to the end, even though we do have the ability to get there. And the reason for that is if you don't do every objective in order, the game will softlock and you won't be able to progress correctly. Now, there are two big exceptions to that um, towards the end of the run. But for the most part, if we have an objective, we have to complete it. So for the first chapter, like I said, we got to repair the tram. Uh, you can do either of these in, you know, whatever order you want, but we have to, well, I guess replace this damaged tram car here, and then we have to go get an item uh, called a data board from another room. Uh, I don't believe it actually matters which one of these you do first. I tend to do this one first because you get stasis, which is nice to have in case you need it, and, well, I don't know, this, this part is a little bit slower pace, a little more relaxed. We kind of just have to wait for these enemies to spawn now. Make sure we kill them all. So I like to get this one out of the way first, usually. 
So we have this guy here. And you can sort of see what I was talking about uh, with the movement. Being able to shoot and reload while running at full speed is very nice. It generally just makes the whole experience a lot smoother. Now, we get one more enemy here um, that we have to kill. Uh, it'll either spawn on the left or right, so just waiting to see. Uh, there is. Cool. So we're going to see the first rig skip here. So you'll see when Kendra calls me, I'm just going to close this text log, and it'll actually skip the video call with her. And the reason that's important is because this door does not unlock until it's over. So we just instantly end the cutscene, it lets us leave. Now, the funny thing is, in the original game, there's a similar thing um, that we call no rig videos, where if you just delete the rig video movies, uh, or move them uh, from your game directory, it just won't play them in-game, and it's a similar thing. If it skips the cutscene, it'll, you know, unlock the door, progress the scene, or whatever. Um, it just so happens that, you know, it's it. there's a similar thing in this game, but we have to do it manually. There are some cutscenes that we can't skip, um, either like the one before where skipping the rig video doesn't do anything, or because you just don't have enough time to pull it up. There'll be, you know, a button and then a call starts immediately and you just don't have the time to open the log, uh, you know, before uh, the cutscene starts. So, uh, you saw me unaim there. You don't always have the ability to get past that guy when he jumps up. Sometimes you get stuck, but your hitbox is a little bit wider, a little bit bigger while you're aiming. So sometimes you'll see me unaim to fit through uh, a smaller gap or to maybe get past an enemy. Right, that guy's not always in the same spot. That wasn't uh, a, t a terrible position for him to be in. Ideally, you want to be farther down the catwalk here so you have time to actually shoot him. Um, now, the enemy spawns are not always completely the same. Or even if we get the same enemy spawns, they don't always act the same way. So this room has a little bit of randomness. And uh, I also had to turn the lights off upstairs to give power to the door down here. It's a new uh, feature of rerouting the power. So here, you, you do have to turn the lights off. But in other cases, you will actually have a choice over what you'd uh, like to turn off. So you might have to turn off the air or the lights. In this case, you know, just the lights. So it makes it a little hard to see where the enemies are. And we actually got pretty lucky there. Um, we didn't get blocked. But sometimes you'll get swarmed and kind of just have to deal with them. The enemies do lose their collision as soon as they die like this. So you can just run right through them. But, you know, when they are still alive, they can gang up on you and, and block you, which can be a bit annoying. But we have the data board, we're going to put that in there. And now Kendra and Hammond are going to take the tram over to the bridge. Uh, one other small thing to note about the uh, cutscene skips here. You'll see me do it with text logs a lot. Now, uh, the reason for that is with a text log, I can just close my rig here and it will skip the cutscene all in one input. But if you have an audio or video call up, you actually have to close it first, then the rig. So it's it's a pretty small time save, but um, in a case like this where I have time to pull up whatever log I want, I'm going to opt to grab a text log. So sometimes you'll see me go out of my way to go back to some previous chapter to select, or in the menu, I mean, to select a text log. Uh, I should also maybe talk a little bit about the category. So this is any percent unrestricted. Uh, we decided to go with Restricted, unrestricted as our naming convention. It's kind of similar to how a lot of games will do any percent glitchless. Uh, some other games like Doom do a similar thing. But basically, uh, it just means, uh, unrestricted means we can use any glitches or out of bounds tricks that we want. And the difficulty we're playing on is story. Uh, there are five difficulties in the game going from story to impossible. And besides this being the easiest difficulty, uh, it also gives us some extra perks. So we get a little bit extra air. There's times in the game we'll go out and do a vacuum, and you have a limited air supply, so in store you get, well, I, I forget how much, but uh, a decent, like 20, 30 seconds more maybe, something like that. Uh, and also, um, when you get damaged, you will, the game will refill your health uh, periodically. So you'll see times where I'll get hit by an enemy on purpose because it's faster to just run past it. I'll be almost dead, and then the game will heal me. Um, so it just makes the uh, 
make some enemy encounters a little faster. And, and in fact, you'll see me uh, purposefully drop uh, every health pack that I pick up because we, we don't need them. So, um, and, and we don't really need to sell them in the store either. So, usually if I have them picked up, I'll, I'll drop them. So, I open up uh, you know, inventory space. So, there's some sections like this that are a little different from the original. So normally in the original you just come in here, you hit a button, the ship starts exploding, you run off, but um, they sort of fleshed out some of these things a little bit more. Uh, this is Johnston, she's another member of the crew. So in the beginning there was another one, uh, well one of the other officers, Chen, uh, who gets killed. He'll, he comes back later in the story. Johnston also dies here in the explosion. Uh, so now it's just Kendra, Isaac, and uh, and Hammond trying to survive. And the, uh, this is the ship they they came in on. If I didn't mention that, so now that has has uh, <laughs> been destroyed. So they don't really have a way off of the ship now. Uh, we're gonna do another cutscene skip here. These really do start to add up too. I believe this one saves almost a minute, where you'd otherwise just be locked out of this elevator here. But I, I like what they did with uh, with Shannon Johnston and, and and really all the characters in this game. They feel a little bit more, uh, you know, fleshed out. They give Hammond more of an arc, especially with you know, uh, with Chen and everything. We see a little bit of that. Um, we do still have to watch. There's some there's some story cutscenes we still have to watch. Um, so like I said, we can skip a lot of them, but that's only if it's an actual rig call. If there's a um, cutscene where you know you are it's like in, in the actual game world um you know with your character then you can't skip those unfortunately but um there's not too too many of them so uh we have the kinesis module now uh this is gonna let us pick up and throw things as well as move things out of the way like this um this is very broken in this particular run and you'll see why very shortly. So that was chapter one. Nothing too crazy, you know, sort of like the tutorial level. But um, again, now that we have Kinesis, we're actually going to start doing uh, our first out of bounds tricks in the run. So, well, maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to spoil it. Some people will just find this really funny uh, when they see this for the first time. So I think maybe. I'll just let this speak for itself. We're gonna grab this uh, companion cube box here. Uh, I'm gonna skip this cutscene. And then I'm gonna take a safety save here because we don't really get a checkpoint. Um, if I have to reload here, it would put me all the way back at uh, the Kinesis module, which is not that far away, but um, some of the tricks in this level in particular are a little, a little inconsistent sometimes. So we're gonna take this box and we are going to well, okay, you sort of see what I'm trying to do here. There we go. So you can use uh, physics objects, particularly boxes, to clip yourself through walls by pretty much just slamming it into your face. <laughs> uh, so that shock pad skip. Well, we're not really skipping the shock pad, but it's a you know, little shortcut to the shock pad. But the idea for this mission is we need to create an explosive to destroy a barrier that lets us get to the morgue where the captain's body is, and we need to get his rig to unlock his rig codes to be able to access the ship's computer. So uh, we, we have the shock pad, that's the first part. Now we need a hydrazine tank, which is in the other section of this level. Uh, we're bringing this box again. We're continuing to bring our companion cube with us, which will be important in a little bit. Uh, that's the wrong one, there we go. Need power to the elevators. Um, you'll see here, lips won't activate. Wait, I did get. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. That's why. Yeah. So if, if an enemy gets too close to a lift, or if they get on it, um, it just won't move. And so that that'll come into play later. Actually, we need to be careful in some sections, otherwise you can get stuck. With that being the case, I uh, almost had good luck there. Sometimes you can get past this guy before uh, he blocks you. And this is another good reason why holding objects, you know, toggle and sprint, um, why, why it's good that this is a thing. Because if we had to move normally uh, while holding this, uh, it would be very, very slow. I'd probably have to be throwing this a lot. 
because your normal aim speed is super slow. But we're heading over to Zero G Therapy here, and you'll see um, if you played the original game, uh, they changed the Zero G mechanics a lot um, for this game. And we get more of a Dead Space 2 and 3 style Zero G, so instead of being locked to the ground and then jumping from point A to point B, we can just uh, fly around with our jet boots here. So it's a lot smoother. A lot of these rooms are redesigned based on that. So now uh, we are going to do another fun thing with Kinesis, which is prop fly. We're going to use this ladder to push ourselves onto this table. Now I'm going to wait a moment here because you get an auto save when Hammond finishes talking here. And I just want to make sure I am not stuck. I'm not losing anyone else. So there we go, got the autosave. Going to do another box clip. Oh, nice, okay, that, that's really good. Uh, that particular clip is very difficult. And the idea is we wanted to land back inbounds like that. Sometimes you land on the ceiling um, and there's a weird backup uh, that you can use, but it's a bit tricky to get back inbounds. But that is much, much easier just landing straight in. Um, fortunately, we got enough speed there, so it's very nice. Ironically, this level in the OG game is one of the least broken. Um, if you haven't seen a, a run of the original, um, I, I would definitely recommend going to check out, uh, especially, especially if you saw the last run uh, by Looney, uh, check out Looney's um, Dead Space 1 run at uh, SGQ. Uh, it's, it's, it, 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 it'll be, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see what I mean. The game is super broken. Um, but again, a couple levels like this one are not actually that broken in the original game, yet in this game, it's one of the most broken. Now we're doing, yet again, another box clip. Uh, this is Morgue Skip. Again, not really skipping the Morgue, but we're just trying to get here faster. That I have never seen before. Um, okay, <laughs> I did not know that could happen, all right. So the idea there is, um, we don't know why, but there's a certain part of the ceiling where if you step onto it, it oh, this guy also grabs you out of the autosave every time. <laughs> that happens. Um, wow, okay, I, I, you know, not to, I, I know that's the, that's the thing people always say in marathons, but I, I truly have never seen that before, so that, that is a new one. But, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try that again. Sometimes you can get stuck up here as well. Uh, you can get down, yeah, there we go, okay, that's actually pretty good. So yes, if you stand on this part of the ceiling, it will just pop you back in bounds. Apparently, sometimes, you can go through the floor. Um, but, you know, again, that's that's news to me. Um, you don't have to reload this save, but there is a small chance we can soft lock if we don't do it, so I usually uh, opt to. What the heck was that? Dude, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know what that was. Maybe there's just a certain part of the floor you stand on and it can do that. Anyway, we've taken a shortcut to the morgue. Again, not actually skipping it, but um, it just saves 20 seconds or so getting down here a little faster. So, we found the captain, we're gonna take his rig. Except, uh, <laughs> before that, he's gonna get turned into a slasher. So we got two really quick objectives coming up. We gotta kill the captain, then kill, uh, clear, the, clear the room of enemies. There's, there's one infector, if we kill him fast enough, no more enemies will spawn. Um, so again, like I was talking about with the objective system, you know, even though the goal of the mission is to get the rig and it is right here, the game doesn't actually let you pick it up until you do these first. So, just really quickly take him out, and then hopefully that guy dies. Nice. Now, this is one of the harder cutscene skips to get. Oh, we got it though, nice. So, the call with him in there starts very, very soon after you pick that up. So, um, that and actually the next one we're going to be doing a little bit um, are both a little tricky, but... Um, if you can manage to pull up the the logs quick enough, you can get it. Isaac, here. So now what we are going happened? to be heading to the chapter three, and we'll have we another example of uh, the remake going in a different direction uh, than the OG here. game. There's no time. So um, they online. have made the ship a lot more open Unless, uh, in this here. game. Head back to the flight deck. I'll guide you and there. so instead of just the taking the tram to engineering deck, we're actually going to go back to the flight deck and take a nice, uh, or not, sorry, I was about to say out of bounds, not out of bounds, I, like, we, we go outside, we're taking the out of bounds, no, outside, I don't know why I'm wanting to say out of bounds, we're going outside, anyway, we're taking this box with us as well, um, and we're gonna be using this in chapter six, uh, but we're gonna be leaving it here for now, uh, and the reason for that is if we leave it back in the medical deck, 
uh, it will despawn. They change up the items uh, when you go when you revisit it in chapter five. But if we leave that box there uh, on the platform, it'll still be there and we can clip out way, way at the end of chapter six in like 20 to 30 minutes from now. Um, I think I kept wanting to say out of bounds here because there is an out of bounds you do, um, and some people do in some runs, but we're not in uh, in this one. Um, though it is very funny, if you just go in a certain corner outside here, it'll, uh, it'll just deload the area. All right, nice. We got a little bit of a boost here. So this is called chicken speed. Um, and basically, it's just if you push certain props behind you uh, with kinesis, you can get a little bit of a speed boost. So we got a, we got a little bit of chicken speed there. There is actually another. It's, it's a lot more precise. There is a way to completely just launch yourself with it and pretty much fly outside here uh, in just a few seconds, which is pretty cool. So yeah, again, this is an example of a completely new area in the remake. There's a lot of places like this. Um, definitely makes this ship feel a lot bigger. Um, it is, it's a really neat aspect of the game. Uh, they also added, this, uh, what you see me doing there is, um, they added uh, an option to allow you to change your role while you're flying like that. Um, if you've seen the OG games will like spin <laughs> the mouse clockwise or counterclockwise to try to like reorient to basically do the same thing but now there's just a, a function for that it makes it a little easier so we're gonna grab this text log here and the reason for that is we need to skip a cutscene and it's a very tight timing and um if i have if i pick up a text log the first time i open my log like database it'll just pull up the text log um so it makes it easier but also, uh, every time you go to a new chapter and you open the database to try to open a log, it'll start you on the chapter you're currently on. So, like, if I'm in chapter three, uh, you know, or if I've just entered chapter three and I haven't picked up a log yet, the list will just be blank. So I'd have to actually menu back over to chapter two. But again, for that one, we don't have much time. So we need to actually have a log before we do the cutscene skip. And you, you might see that later where, you know, I think we do it in chapter six as well. I'll have to pull up a log uh, from a previous level, so you have to actually see me menu over to that. Now, we're going to be setting up some stuff here for an out of bounds in a little bit. So, we've got to refuel the engines and then fix the centrifuge uh, before we can go restart the engine, which is the ultimate goal of this mission. Oh, this guy's making the lift not move. Nice. Okay. All right. Check out this real quick. They're real good. Nice. We definitely want these stasis packs for later. Got to get them out of ammo. All right. So we're going to uh, go out of bounds and take a shortcut to the centrifuge. So we're going to do the refueling first. I did the first half over there and broke a fuse um, so we can go through that door later. So after we do the second uh, refueling station here, we're going to use a prop to jump out of bounds. Uh, and we're going to head to the decontamination area before the centrifuge, uh, which technically you can skip, but if you don't do it, uh, you'll get softlocked. So we are going to have to do that. It would be a lot faster, and this trick actually would be a lot easier if we could just land in the centrifuge, but, you know, oh well. So I'm going to leave this here. Uh, we need this key card to get in the room here to switch the power to the refueling station. And, oh, yep, this guy follows me, just to make sure he gets out of the way. Alright, uh, I am also going to take a safety save for this trick, because it is honest, on, honestly pretty difficult. I, I, I think it's one of the more difficult tricks in the run. Or there's just a lot of weird things about it that can happen. I, I mean, maybe it's not one of the hardest, but it's, it's very easy for things to go wrong, and there's not really a great checkpoint anywhere nearby, kind of like with shock pad skips. So I finished refueling, and now we're going to stand on this box, and hopefully we can climb up over the railing. Okay. You see, Isaac, uh, he kind of cooperated with me there, but he generally does not like to walk off of ledges. Um, instead of putting up invisible walls to prevent you from, you know, falling out of bounds, they decided to just make it very hard to walk off of ledges. You still can in some places. But, again, it's quite difficult. Okay, so we landed in the centrifuge, so we're gonna try that again. 
So you saw me uh, pausing and pausing the game there. Um, that was really close, actually. Uh, we seem to be a little bit earlier there. Uh, so we're going to do this again. Oh, there's my box. So, sometimes this prop fly is a little annoying, although we got it really well the last time. And that should be high enough. Oh, I might be stuck. Nope. Okay, there we go. Nice. All right, so we're going to line ourselves up, run off. All right, let's see if we get it this time. Maybe. No, okay. That was close. We got it. We got it next time, I think. So um, there is, it, what makes this a little tricky too is uh, there's a little bit of a delay from when you unpause the game to when you can repause. Um, so it, uh, it was in a little bit of a tricky situation there because I needed to get a really fast pause to be able to land on the right spot. But then, um, you know, you can't, you, you can't pause as fast as you can press the button. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful to sort of delay your second input when you're pause buffering there. Cause um, again, if you, if you do it too quickly, just nothing will happen and you'll just uh, stay unpaused there. So, okay, this, this is more of how this uh, will usually go. Or like when I said how this can be a little annoying, sometimes he just doesn't really want to get up there. That's all right. Oh, that might be it. Ah, almost. You, you, can, you can see he's like almost getting up there, but not quite. Uh, maybe. Oh, there we go. We'll kind of just go back and forth until he decides to go over the railing. Just try not to get stuck anywhere. All right, let's see. Let's see if we get it this time. That should be good. Yes, okay. So now we've landed out of bounds, and 0G tends to be broken in all of these games, but in this game it's arguably the most broken because we can keep flying until we hit a room that has 0G. Um, I'm actually going to count here real quick. So one, two, three, four. Not really a lot of visual cues here, so we kind of just have to count there. We got it? Okay, nice. So we just fly forward there for a little bit of fly down land straight in this room. Now we need to do this, like I said, to not soft lock. And the reason is these doors will not unlock. Specifically that one right there. Unless we do this fight first. So even though we don't have to do this, like it's not an objective to do this this fight, but um, we need that to be able to progress. Because if we just landed it in the centrifuge and completed it, the zero G gets turned off. And the only way is to go back normally and you would just get stuck right there. So we just got to kill four enemies here. A stasis pack, nice. It's pretty lucky, actually. Might save us a little bit of time later. Um, oh yeah, so I, I, as I was explaining before, uh, Zero-G, very broken. So in the original trilogy, the way it works is Zero-G is, um, there's always a bounding box. And if you're within that bounding box, you have Zero-G. And if you leave it, you don't. In this game, once you're in zero G, um, it's just turned on. It's not bound to the area that you're in. So unless you load in an area that doesn't have zero G, which is what we did there, you can fly wherever you want. So that area I mentioned you get out of bounds at the beginning of this chapter, you can actually fly all the way to chapter 12, which is the last level of the game. So you're, you're you know, 20 ish minutes into the end of the run, you can fly to the end of the game. But because of the objective system, uh, it's not loaded properly. So you can go around and interact with some of the objects, but um, things just, you just get soft locked if you try to progress. Otherwise the run would be about 30 minutes, um, which would be way faster. Um, but it's probably a good thing that that's not the case. I think the run is a lot more interesting this way. This probably would have been a category anyway, you know, all chapters or something like that, if, we, if that skip had worked. But I, I, I do think this is more interesting because the, tr the trick would involve flying in the void for about six minutes. That's about how long it takes to get there. Um, so I, I, I don't know about you all. I, I personally think this is probably a little more interesting. <laughs> um, also, we're not supposed to... I don't think you're really supposed to be able to go around this way, but with our faster move speed, we can make it before this thing kills us. Okay, I'm actually going to drop that health pack there. 
Nice. Yeah, usually we don't have three stasis packs there. That's gonna be pretty nice. Might only save us like a few seconds, but it's it's good to have. So we get a drag tentacle here. Just gotta, you know, shoot the big weak spot, kill it. Nice. So now that we've completed the uh, first two main objectives here, we can go fix the engine. And we are going to do another sequence break to get there a little bit quicker. So I know, uh, you know, in the Callisto run, you know, we love seeing the, uh, the shimmies. Well, this game also has a shimmy. We're going to be skipping it. But I remember seeing that and thinking, and like, cause this is, you know, pretty, pretty soon after uh, Callisto came out, like the release of this game, right? So I saw that in one of the trailers and I was, I was thinking like, oh man, is this game gonna have a lot of those shimmies too? But it is actually just that one. Um, but it did remind me of that. Um, and the, so the way we're gonna skip that is we're going to break a fuse to unlock a door and go through the exit of the area, which is normally over here. So if we unaim and then re-aim and shoot very quickly, uh, your shot can actually go through the wall. And it might take a few tries here, but if we aim in the right spot, we can actually hit the fuse like that. Very nice. So it unlocks the door. There we go. Now we just gotta do a fight here to uh, progress the room can't actually finish restarting the engines until we kill them. Kill some of them as I make my way over here. And we also have to put this battery back. Alright, uh, their spawns are also not the same every time, the actual locations. So we just have to react to what we get here. Sometimes we get some up here. Oh, there's one, yeah. Okay. There's some weird spots. Oh yeah, okay, that's what I thought. There's one here. Some weird spots that can spawn, so I'm just making sure I get them all. And that should be the last one. It's dead. There we go. All right, so I didn't really mention it before, but it might come up in this room. We'll see. Um, this game has something called... Oh, yep, there's an enemy. Okay, so this game has something called the Intensity Director, and it's a system that determines random events uh, that play, and generally something will happen um, every room, but it can be very minor things, or it can be something very major, like an enemy spawn. So I've had three or four enemies spawned just in this hallway right here before, for example. But you saw instead we got a, with some sound effects with a, a, a vent spinning with some sparks. So it could be something like like that, like a visual or audio effect. Um, it can be fog. Um, or like I said, you can get enemy spawns. Sometimes you can get uh, a combination of enemies. So, you know, if you're really unlucky, you might get like an exploder uh, with like two slashers or something like that, you know, and you gotta actually uh, take them out. Yeah, exactly. Like that, that fan spinning was an intensity director event. So ideally, you want stuff like that to happen and not three enemies jumping down in front of you because they'll, you know, block your path and you can sometimes lose a little time. Fortunately, because we're on story and because, you know, we can shoot while running at full speed, it's not as big of a deal because a lot of times if you react quickly enough and you aim well, you can take out the enemies um, and kill them before they actually get in your way um, now yeah. at the cutting their necks off oh no yeah it's it's um well we do shoot clo close to the head but ideally uh you want to take off the arms for slashers um because if you take off a leg they don't always die right away sometimes you got to take off two more limbs after that also we were holding forward right into that um bench there to 
uh, skip a stagger animation. We did get staggered a little bit, but normally you get stuck in place kind of like this. When uh, that enemy uh, is called a brute when it punches through the glass there, normally you get stuck for a bit. But uh, you can dodge that. You okay? So that enemy spawning that I mentioned before after the engine um, did spawn from the intensity director. So a lot of the enemies are consistent. And like I said earlier in the game, they might not always do the same thing or be in the same place, but you will still get the same spawns. But in a lot of cases, like especially these connecting hallways, you know, going from one place to the other, those enemies will be random. So it does, uh, it, or it can lose or save a little bit of time depending on what you get there are actually some intensity director events involving door animations so sometimes they will open really slowly which obviously is is you know loses time but the one time where an intensity director event actually saves you time is you can get a very very fast door animation where it opens super quickly they're pretty rare so i don't know if we'll even see one in this run but uh it can't happen one-shotting some of them yeah it's well so what it's because one we're on story so the difficulty is is set pretty low but also um taking off the arms at least for slashers is the the best way to do damage as you just take off both arms and they die so i was going to pick up a text log here to be able to skip uh dialogue so you can see what i'm talking about here actually um uh in the database here we have all the chapters we've done so far but when you first go to uh, a chapter you don't have any logs there yet so they all look like this and you can't open anything here so um that's why like sometimes you'll see me go back over and open one from a, a, a previous level um, and that's why i'm picking up this one from chapter four because there's a few we want to skip and it, it'll it'll remember where we're at in the level so if i if i close this it'll still be over the text log and not like the video log or somewhere down here um so in that case now that we have that set up i can just mash and then you know we have it set up but cec had to know about the marker the company maybe but shit like that's above my pay grade yeah the intensity director memes can be pretty funny sometimes you can turn the atrium oh yeah so we're talking to hammond here they're just talking about how to fix the asteroid defense system uh because it's uh not on at the moment that? and uh the ship's gonna get torn apart by asteroids if we don't fix it fortunately we can't skip this because we do get an objective for talking to hammond here um but you know in a run of this length it's nice to have at least one restroom break potentially <laughs> if you really need it i want to mash interact here um sometimes if you're quick enough you can actually open the door before but sell it on like that nice it's like a second maybe we take that if we can get it. All right, so now we are going to have our first encounter with the brute. But that's on tram stop events. Yeah, so that is actually the worst one that can happen is the trams can crash where they just stop and don't move for 20 to 30 seconds. And those, those are also random. So we could potentially get one of those as well. So brutes have uh, these weak spots. You can hit one of the ones on the arm uh, from the front, actually, like that. If you don't hit the weak spots, um, it takes a while to knock those guys down. But if you know where to aim, uh, you can take them down pretty quick. So now we're going to take a shortcut. This only saves a little bit of time, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we are trying to get down to the lower level. So instead of taking the elevator, we're going to just take a shortcut out of bounds here you'll see me aiming and unaiming just because it, again it changes your hitbox size so sometimes it makes it easier to fit through certain gaps and things just gonna pause the game to make sure it loads in and there we go move that power to the ads cannon unaim here so don't get hit by this electricity you can squeeze by while aiming but it is a little riskier and even on story the electricity can one shot you if you stand on it for too long um and now we are grabbing the only other weapon we're going to be using in this run actually this is the contact beam uh it is very very strong it's primarily going to be used for boss fights but you'll see me use it for some other combat as well especially if my cutter ammo is a bit low but the primary fire is just a continuous beam uh 
this really, really big hitbox. So that's useful. Uh, makes some things easier. The, the continuous hitbox part really uh, helps a lot, especially for boss fights. But uh, the alt fire is also uh, very good. It's more similar to the the original game's primary fire, where you you charge up the beam. It's like a like an explosion. But it has a like I said a very big hitbox, and so we can actually use that for a skip later on to hit something we're not really supposed to. Now this electricity isn't always the same. It's always on a set cycle, but I think the cycle starts. Okay, so like I, I maybe could have made that, but. If you go for it and you get stuck on that and the whole thing hits you, you do die. Which we definitely want to avoid. There we go. One of those. So I can actually skip grabbing a refuel or a, a stasis recharge over there, which only saves a few seconds. But because we got that uh, stasis pack earlier, I can just use that instead of walking over there. Isaac, I cracked the Ishimura's meds. I there was a chance I could have saved it for later as well, but generally the stasis is routed out pretty consistently over the run, so I think it's probably better to just use it here uh, for that time save, as opposed to there's because there's a chance I might just not use it otherwise. So. Uh, we will see if I regret that decision later. Alright, so we've just got one more uh, circuit to redo. Um, we need to go up to the top floor now. And up here, uh, we're also going to fight some enemies. I'm going to take this cutscene skip a little safe because sometimes it feels like it comes up sooner than it is supposed to, or like not supposed to, but sometimes it's sooner than other times. Um, it's like a 20 second time loss if we miss it, but might as well just take it safe. So we're gonna kill this guy, we're gonna redirect the power, and then I'm just gonna immediately pull this up. Get away over here. And wait for him to call us. There we go. Alright, now we're gonna kill this guy specifically because. There's a very weird thing that happens sometimes where um, that slasher will just be stuck, like clipped into the wall of the next elevator, the one down to the bottom floor. And if you remember uh, from what I was saying earlier, uh, lifts, including elevators, will not move if an enemy is too close to it or is inside of it. And the game considers the slasher to be in the elevator. And sometimes it's very hard to kill the enemy while it's clipped to the wall. Um, and it's possible to just get stuck there. So. Usually to be safe, I just kill him to make sure that isn't a problem. Um, now, this replaces the turret section from the original game, and instead we just have to calibrate the uh, cannons by hitting five asteroids with each one. So it definitely goes by a lot faster, not an auto-scroller anymore, which I do like. Missed that one. And once we get to the last one, oh, careful there. Uh, that, so that didn't do too much damage, but I have had them clip into me before, drag me to the floor, and kill me instantly. So it always just makes me a little nervous. Uh, but yeah, so once we get to the third one here, you'll see that... Oh, there we go. Um, the other cannons will actually start to steal your shots. And so you gotta look out for the aim reticle of the other cannons and if they're you, you gotta you gotta you know decide okay do i do i think i can shoot this before the cannon does it or uh, just move on try to shoot a different one they shoot pretty quick so if i see another uh cannon aiming at one of the asteroids i just go for a different one all right we're gonna skip another cutscene. we're actually gonna skip two here so i'm gonna close this and then mash to open it again. Cancel that one. Nicole, there we go. I'm going back to medical. So while you, you do get three calls I'll here, this we'll one we don't need to skip though be because it ends time. before we get to the locked door up here. Yeah, those, those those can one shot, and it is very uh, very unfortunate when that happens. All right, we're gonna stasis this guy so he doesn't jump in the lift. And 
and now we are in chapter five. So we're gonna make our way back to the medical deck. Uh, we did not get trolled there. Sometimes a leaper will jump at you and put you in this stagger animation. So this is actually one place the random tram crashes can happen, so first chance to see that, maybe. There we go, medical. Which is funny, because this is a short tram ride anyway. So yeah, it really, really sucks when that happens. There is one tram crash that always happens in Chapter 8, so regardless, we'll get to see what it looks like, but they can also just happen anywhere when you're on the tram. But again, that that is definitely the worst intensity director meme that you can get for the speedrun, at least. Another audio call we don't need to skip. Uh, this one does save a few seconds, though. So I don't know the exact time save over the whole run, but it's got to be in like the 20 plus minute range for the, the time save on all those cutscene skips. It really, really helps the pacing of the run a lot. So this is uh, Dr. Mercer, uh, one, of the, one of the main villains of the game. So he is uh, working in medical, obviously, but he is doing experiments on people and on the necromorphs. And we'll see a little bit about, or a little bit more about that uh, pretty soon here. Uh, before that, we are going to do another fuse break. So same thing as chapter three. We're just going to unaim, reaim, and shoot really quickly. And if we hit the right spot, it will unlock this door here. So let's see if we can get that. This one's a little trickier. Oh, there we go. We got it. Nice. All right. So we walk over here to hit a load trigger to load in uh, this guy. will be important in a second here. Some of these cutscenes, I wait just a little bit because um, there is a small chance you can soft lock. And I found that waiting a little bit makes it a bit better. So uh, we find out Mercer has really, really, really strong stasis that lasts a very long time. So we are stuck here All right. for just a little bit. Dr. Brennan's nearest and dearest. Uh, I did do a little bit of timing on some of the cutscenes, mostly this one, in uh, different languages to see if any of them were faster. So I did learn this cutscene is about exactly two minutes and two seconds. So, you know. Fun fact, I didn't really time any of the other ones. Uh, it turns out the different languages do not make it any faster, though. Uh, so you'll, I, you'll definitely see that in a lot of runs where uh, one language, either text or audio or both, is, is faster. So, um, But yeah, in this case, we're just playing in English because it uh, doesn't really make a, a difference either way. Um, all the, the facial animations are the same, even if you change the language. Um, so we're pretty sure they're all just scripted to be the same length. No matter what. And I haven't fully explored. Uh, but basically, this thing is called the Hunter. Um, he was experimenting on somebody and basically turned them into this uh, creature. So it it will uh, regenerate its limbs, so you can't outright kill it. Um, so for this next section, uh, the way we want to progress it is we force him to regenerate by just taking off both arms, and then skip a call from Kendra, and then a little bit later she'll unlock the door, and we can just leave. So. But we will see this guy again uh, a few times throughout the game. Alright, so he's gonna head out for now and we're gonna deal with our new friend here. Coincidentally, uh, the stasis wears off just in time. And that's good for us. So, like I said, just hang out both arms. Uh, like how most enemies die or slashers die if you take their arms off. Um, he also can't attack you without either arm, so he just regenerates them immediately. 
And we are out of here. Um, that was actually a little bit of nice time save there. Um, that door isn't always open, but because... Oh, man, you guys grab me. Grab me later, that might be annoying, but not a big deal. Um, I believe there was an enemy there holding the door open. So just saves us a little bit of time not having to open it. Um, and those those enemies, the technical things, come from uh, another enemy called uh, or they're they're called guardians. So there's these creatures on the wall, um, and the idea is if you get too close to them, they will insta kill you, and they'll also throw out those other enemies to usually protect like a door or something. Now the range in the original games is absolutely massive, and they will destroy you. In this game, the range is actually quite small, so we can just run past a lot of them like that. Now, this is Poison Skip, so we're going to stasis that door, which actually does slow it down, and we're able to get out of that room. Now, again, because of the objective system, we can't just completely run to the end of the level now. So we wait for that audio cue, and then we can advance. There's there's a few things we need to do, or places we need to wait here to make sure this progresses co uh, correctly. So that was the first one. Uh, I'm just going to kill some of these enemies, then we'll... Shoot me here. So we're gonna wait about here. Wait for this call. I'm gonna skip it. And then after a line from the computer, uh, we can run. Uh, it, it this honestly doesn't save that much time, but the idea is we are able to not have to wait as much. Because normally you have to wait in that room that whole time until around here. So it just, just saves a little bit of running, but it's a cool trick. Um, and you'll see it happen in a little bit, but normally Mercer gases the deck. You see a bunch of like green smoke, like gas looking stuff come out, which you will see very briefly here. So we're just going to wait for this to turn on. Turn that on as soon as possible. Fix that. And there we go. You'll see our objectives are a little uh, behind here, so it's going to go through a bunch of stuff we've already done. All right. So our next objective, like I said, is to get the uh, is to get the liquid nitrogen, which is conveniently right here. And then we have another section with the Mercer here. Who's gonna talk with what? I can add that one to the list. I've I've not had an enemy follow me in here before, but I guess that can happen. All right. So chapter five definitely has some of the most kind of just like waiting around in the game, but starting with the next level, the pace of the run actually picks up a lot. And especially once we get to chapter seven, uh, we're going to be doing a lot more out of bounds stuff. We'll talk about more then as well, but um, chapter seven is the least broken level in the original game. The full run is about 68 minutes and even Chapter 7 is 13 of it in the original game, so out, out, out of 12 levels, so it there's a few skips, but like not not anything super substantial compared to the rest of the game. But Chapter 7 in this game is arguably one of, if not the most broken level. I don't know if I'd say the most broken level anymore, but it's it top three for sure. And this game has some big skips, so uh, you'll 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 see why in a little bit. Um, but we're gonna have our first fight. Or, well, first fight where we can actually really do something to this guy here. So, ideally, if we time this right, we just stasis him right about there. I need him to get around him, and if I'm quick enough, I can freeze him before he gets out, which we did. Nice. Very cool. Call here. S 
Sweet. Okay. So, um, assuming I did it right, we should still have our box, our, our companion cube, all the way from chapter two, back at the flight deck. So we'll see if it's still there, and if it is, we're going to be using that to uh, do a clip out all the way at the end of this level, actually. So this this box goes on quite the adventure here. All for a, a trick that saves like I think like thirty seconds, <laughs> something like that. Four games after this, uh, I believe this is the last run. Uh, of tonight for this uh, show. And our box is still here. Very nice. All right. So, yeah, we are going to be carrying this thing for a lot of Chapter 6. Again, very nice that Toggle Aim Sprint is a thing so we can carry this around without losing any time. Or, well, at least just from, you know, moving around. Uh, like running and stuff. Uh, we're going to skip another cutscene here. Be careful I don't hit it too early. If I can avoid, you know, if I, I'm, I'm just hoping we hit all the cutscene skips this run. It, it, when you first learn this game, um, remembering where all of those are and like where to skip them is probably one of the hardest things because there are so many of them. It's a lot easier for me now just because I've, you know, been running the game so much in the past month or so. Uh, since it came out, but it took me many runs to get all of them. Um, it's it's very easy to forget sometimes. Yeah, no problem. Come on, Tyke. All right, so this is really the only time in the run where we need to store. I guess like maybe one more time later if we need to. But we're just buying a bunch of plasma cutter ammo here. Even though we are in story, it is actually easy to run out of cutter ammo just because we use it for pretty much everything. Um, especially because we're not really going that far out of our way to grab a lot of, uh, you know, ammo pickups. So that just helps us out a little bit. Be a little safe on this one. It's definitely one of those ones you do not want to miss, you know, loses over a minute. <laughs> Okay, so the ultimate goal here is to kill um, a giant biomass and food storage uh, called the Leviathan. Also, we're going to run it backwards here because if we do get hit, um, you always stagger backwards. And sometimes when running backwards, you kind of just go straight through that gas and it doesn't hit you. Uh, but yes, anyway, we're trying to kill the Leviathan, but in order to get there, we need to kill eight enemies first called Weezers. Need to inject them with an enzyme. Um, in the OG game, you actually can just shoot them, but here we need to actually go all the way up to them and inject them. Um, that does not mean that we still can't sequence break this level, because we certainly can. And you'll see, in a, in a, in a little bit here, one of the main reasons we uh, get the contact beam. But first, we're just going to take out the first few of these guys. That was a little close. He, again, if they get on the lifts, they won't move. See, he almost just made us uh, go back down there. Has it ran out of grip yet? Yeah, I know, right? I got ammo from him, it's okay. Yeah, no, we are, we are still not done with our adventure with this box. A little ways to go. Is that a Weezer? I love that band. Oh. Okay, so we can get hit by one of these guys without dying. Oh, unless uh, he just doesn't hit me. All right. Cool. You will actually go all the way into the red with your health there, but on story you do not die. Instantly to those guys. Well, if you're at full health. I mean. Well, we might get hit up by one on the way back then, we'll see. 
again, another example of the Guardian's range not being terribly big, terribly long, so we can kind of just ignore him and kill the enemy. This guy likes to jump at you. Okay. Zero gravity. Dodge from there, that's good. Um, maybe he did die? I don't know. Oh, that was weird. So we're gonna get dodge this guy. This is a room with random enemies sometimes, but at least they weren't in our way. I guess that's the other thing too, if you are going to get random enemies, hopefully it's in a place like that where there's maybe multiple paths and you can just dodge them. The fire extinguisher killed him? Oh, maybe. That's interesting. I was expecting to get hit there. Isaac, I looked up Cross's notes on the... Oh god. Oh my god. It's him. Two behind you. Alright, so that's four out of eight. Other four are on this side. First, we gotta like, kill this brute to get rid of the quarantine. Same thing as before, just take out an arm, shoot the legs a few times, he's dead. I'm gonna grab this battery, put that over there. Um, so, they've turned this area, um, or the, the developers, I mean, into a uh, zero G room. So, uh, we're gonna need to turn that on. Now, here's the skip we're doing with the contact beam. So, um, these tentacles are usually meant to be shot at the very end of the level, but you can hit them with the contact beam's uh, hitbox there. And so we're going to do a sequence break to actually go to the end of the level and skip a decently long section. So we go, turn the gravity off, we're going to fly up here. Oh, lands. There we go. Some of these go by pretty quick here, so another one in this room. Now behind us is um, a door to the room where we just did that sequence break, so normally you can't get in here until the end because of the tentacles in the way, but now we can. So this is actually Weezer number 8, the last one. You're not really required to do them in a specific order, but they sort of intend you to do it in, you know, like going 1 through 8. Um, although I believe in my casual playthrough I did six last because I, I, I like hadn't figured out how to turn the zero G on or something like that. Yo, what's up, Cash? All right, so we are just about ready to finally use this box that we picked up towards the beginning of the run. So we're gonna throw that over there, and we're gonna kill the last one, Weezer number seven. All right. So now we just have to get to the boss room. And fortunately for us, that zero G area that we were just in is still activated. So if we can land there, we can just fly to the boss room. And that's what we are going to attempt to do here. So we need to not get too much momentum here. Uh, that's good, like that. Pause game, let this load. So I've landed outside the zero G. And again, we won't lose zero G till we load in a level that doesn't have it. So I can fly pretty much wherever I want. I'm gonna dodge some rooms here on my left that would uh, load in and get us stuck. So this is the boss room here. I'm just gonna line myself up so I know where I am. And ideally, we land in the tunnel to food storage, which should be like right here. Very nice. And we are not soft locked. Nice. There is a small chance that sometimes, or maybe not even like a chance, but sometimes that panel's not active. We think it might be the path you take out of bounds, but that seems to work. Cool. So now we are gonna fight the boss and using contact beam, pretty much the whole thing. And we're gonna destroy these three tentacles first. Uh, pretty simple for the first two. Um, for the third one, I do actually need to make sure I'm close enough to it. Otherwise, it will go out to one of the other holes before attacking me. So with this extra uh, animation. So I'm getting right in front of it to make sure it attacks me from here. Then once I see the animation, I start to dodge and we can just kill it. 
Um, now, usually um, you can take this guy out in three hits, but if you time your second hit really well uh, with the alt fire, we can hit him when he's just briefly vulnerable. Right about there. Nice. Okay, we got one of them. Now, this last phase is pretty much identical, so we're going to try to do the same thing. Going to dodge an extra attack here. So if we miss it, we just do three of those. But if we can hit the alt fire, it saves a bit of time. Nice. Okay, we got both of them. That's really good. So yeah, for whatever reason, uh, with that particular hitbox, you can only hit it at that brief moment when it's just kind of pulling back to the center. Um, that was nice. Uh, on the text log, whatever. Seeing you in the control room. Not a big deal. Both of these are pretty long cutscenes. We're gonna skip both of those. An SOS beacon. Someone better send all the others. All right, now we are heading into chapter seven. This is where things are really going to start to get interesting here. So like I said, this level is very broken. It's, it's probably the hardest level in the run. Although, well, chapter 12 is also very hard, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But this is pretty up there. Oh yeah, don't forget to skip this one. Cool. So first off, we are going to skip a fight on this elevator. It only triggers if you are on the elevator while it's going down. So, um, it's a little precise, but if we, we can stand in a spot here where the doors don't close behind us, but we can also interact with this. And then we are going to activate it and run out like that. And then the elevator's going down without us. And I'm just going to set myself up here. So, yeah, like I said, the fight will only play if you are actually on the elevator while it goes down. Um, we are not, so it just won't. Um, but if the elevator gets to the bottom and then we fall down on top of it, it'll let us progress like normal. Um, and for the whole rest of the chapter, we don't have to do that fight. So it saves a decent uh, amount of time. Uh, again, Isaac does not really like to walk off ledges in this game, uh, so that's why I have this box behind me. When I'm able to open this door here, I'm going to use it to uh, help push myself off, because otherwise you can't just walk off normally. And make sure the elevator's all the way at the bottom, it's still going... Uh, right about there looks good. So now I can inch off and hopefully I don't get stuck. This looks pretty good to me. Nice. Okay. So we're going to take this box with us. Somebody had a funny uh, meme in the Dead Space Discord. Um, you know, the, the, the serial oops all. I actually don't even remember what it is, but it's like every time someone, you know, posts a new skip in this game, it's like, oops, <laughs> all boxes. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, like you saw with that elevator skip, we do have tricks in this game that don't involve slamming a box in your face, but... There are a lot of them. <laughs> oh wait, there we go. Oops. Sorry, I had a weird EA play <laughs> pop up show up to make sure it wasn't gonna like do something weird. But we're good. Uh, I guess I'll just leave that there. That later, kill some of these guys. Um, oh no! You know what? You know what it was. The other one that was really funny is um, somebody. Somebody else also posted. You know me when I opened the the Strats channel or whatever, and it was the the SpongeBob thing where like Squidward keeps changing the channel and it's all boxes. Uh, that that's uh, it, it, yeah. There's there's a SpongeBob clip for everything. Somehow, even really niche stuff like this. Slam a box into your back. Yeah, exactly. It's completely different. You're hitting the box behind you instead of in front, you know? <laughs> Alright, um, speaking of which, uh, there are conveniently a lot of these boxes on this level. So, this is the processing deck. We're about to do processing deck skip. 
So uh, our objective right now is to just get Dallas's rig. Uh, he was one of the uh, who worked on this deck. And normally you gotta go do the zero G room and throw the asteroids into a big beam to destroy them. But instead we are just going to clip through this wall. Again, common theme, we're gonna go to sort of like the exit of this area first, just like that, nice. It's the Dead Space Companion Cube, yeah. All right, so we actually need this again. Now this this saves almost five minutes. This skip is huge. Um, this is a beacon skip. So now our next objective is just to get the beacon. So we're gonna skip the entire section of going really slow on that gondola and protecting the coal by clipping out of bounds. Do some punches here to hopefully get the timing right. Nice. Okay. Very very nice. So you, we have to pause there to have the level loaded at the right time. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Now we have the beacon skipping this whole, like, the whole tower defense stuff. Um, now, there is a trick here called Looney Fly. Named after Looney, if you saw his run earlier. I'm gonna try this, like, once. Um, it's not even in my PB yet. It's very, very hard. And a well, I don't want to say inconsistent. It's just very precise. But maybe... Ooh, okay, we got it, actually. Oh, the first part. Um... I should also explain like why that happens. Basically, um, that's the room Nicole disappears in normally when she talks to you on the gondola. But since we skipped that, the door never locks. And so if you stand at the back of the hallway, the room deloads. Um, certain rooms will do that if you're not supposed to be in there or um, you know if it's out of bounds, you get too far away from the room, whatever, it'll just deload the area. Now, uh, just using some collision to line up here. We're still not in the clear yet. This part is also difficult because if I end up in a weird spot, I might get stuck. But it's uh, it's 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 worth a try at least. Um, which is also funny because I, I right before the run I was practicing that deload, and it was giving me a lot of trouble. And so I was just like, you know what? I'll go for it once. If it doesn't work, it's whatever. But um, I'm hoping we get it. I did this run at another marathon uh, called Hig recently, and I actually also got this somehow. So, you know, maybe I gotta start going for it in runs at some point, but... Uh, oh, we missed the room just barely. That's too bad. Um, I guess we go for it one more time, right? I, I think it's worth it. If we don't get it this time, then I'll just I'll just do it the normal way, it's fine. But that was, that was very close. So, we're, basically, we just have to get back up to the control room, uh, where we tried to launch the asteroid in the first place. Oh, so we're just trying to take a shortcut up there. See, I shouldn't have mentioned that I got it last time, because as soon as I did that, yeah, the game was like, no. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we get it again. Okay, I went a little early there. So if you if you don't stay in the corner long enough, it doesn't load. And I'm getting that uh, dialogue here a second time. Basically, try to like run forward and says gravity. Oh, nice. Okay, the trick is free. No, that 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 part is 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 very hard. Okay, let's give this one more shot. If I if I don't get it again, we'll just do it the normal way. But gotta at least try it. Um, and again, we won't lose zero G until we get too close to an area that actually doesn't have it. Um, so we can fly pretty much wherever we want here. And again, we're just using collision from the level. To know where we are. Wait, wait, fly forward. Alright, let's be a little more careful this time. Well, we do have to fly forward for quite a little bit here. Um, I thought I was going to land on top of the room last time, but I guess we missed it just a little bit. You can either fly in from above and directly load it, or if you land on top of it, there's a backup to deload the area and get back in. A little slow. Oh, okay. We somehow landed on top of the room. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna punch in this corner until we fix the timing there. Pause the game. There we go. Okay. That's Looney Fly. Nice. <laughs> so we actually got it. That's that's really good. Glad we were able to get that. Again, my, my PB doesn't even have that. It's it's a it's a really hard trick, and it only saves time if you get it first try. Um, and there, because there's not really like a great checkpoint near there. I mean, you, there, there's like an okay checkpoint, but you still got to run away back. But that's good. We got that. It's very nice. 
Um, we still have some other stuff to do here before we can actually launch our SOS beacon. This guy's just chilling here. I, he does that sometimes. I'm, I'm honestly not really sure why that happens, but you know, he's just, he's just vibing. It's all right. All right, so we can take a hit from this guy. As you can see, he does a lot of damage, but we are fine. Yo, thank you for the good luck. Appreciate it. Yo, Looney Fly. Let's go, dude. All right. So um, they tried to launch the beacon by itself, but it didn't let them. So we're going to attach it to this asteroid. And in order to launch the asteroid, we need to get rid of these gravity tethers holding it in place. So I'm just doing that right now. That leaper almost hit me. I've had one run where a leaper actually knocked me into that gravity beam back there and killed me instantly. Processing beam, whatever they call it. Um, that almost kind of happened again there, actually. But, you know, we're, we're good. We did, get, we did get Looney Fly, actually, yeah. I got, I got stuck the first time. We got a second try. So. This thing was worth it. Alright, so we placed the beacon, destroyed the tethers. We're almost done with this level. All we gotta do now is actually go launch the asteroid. Deloading a mid-spawn from the infector causes that. Oh, okay. I, that, I, guess, I guess that makes sense, yeah. Because I see it a decent amount, but not every time. So I'm, I was wondering what, what caused that. It's interesting. All right, but we still got one more trick left in this level, and that's arguably one of the harder ones out of the, like, four or five that we do. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but it is called Quarantine Skip, and it is worth going for a few times here if we don't get a first try, because it saves a lot. But it not only saves time in this level, it saves time later in the game. And the reason for that is um, you get locked in the room, and you see the door just says Quarantined. Um, don't lose the box. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, well, I gotta go back down. It's fucking up my box. Okay, that 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 that's that one's on me. I was not holding that correctly, but we're good. So I guess that can happen. We gotta be careful. <laughs> okay. So um, when you're in a quarantine state, um, you cannot get another quarantine, like a second one. So. It'll prevent us from getting another fight later if we get this basically, but we'll we'll see if we actually get it first. Online, Wasn't even worried about it. <laughs> oh, there's the hunter by the way, he just kinda gets stuck. So not really supposed to be out here yet. Um well that was that was really good. Um uh, that that clip is not the most consistent thing in the world and is very difficult, definitely a run killer, but that went great actually. <laughs> So, I'll take it. This guy's just standing there. Just, usually he drops out of the vent. Alright, so now I can explain more. So, that quarantine is still active because we clipped through the door while it was still on. Um, and again, we can't get another one later. So, assuming we keep this state um, all the way to chapter 9, um, there's another quarantine fight that just won't play. So, it saves another full minute in that level. Now, the only downside is save stations go on standby mode when a quarantine is active, meaning you can't use it, can't save the game. Um, we can still get checkpoints, fortunately, but we can't actually make safety saves. So the next trick, Chapter 8 skip, um, sometime, if, I, if I'm able to, I used to you know, make a save beforehand because um, it's, you know, if, you, you have to ride the tram here again if you miss it. So basically, if we miss that somehow, then uh, we won't be able to do the other quarantine skip later. But as long as I don't reload the game, uh, we'll be okay. So we'll see how it goes. It, worst case, we just don't do the other, or we don't do the other quarantine skip. We do the fight. Um, not a huge deal if that happens. Um, it's not a terribly difficult trick. But um, like one of the other box clips we did earlier, we need to not get a bunch of momentum out of bounds. We actually want to land on this small platform, like just, just beyond the wall we're going to clip through. Um, if we get launched out of bounds, we can still get it, but it's not uh, guaranteed. 
there's that tram crash. So I mentioned earlier these can happen randomly. Um, this is the one that is consistent. You always get this one, uh, to my knowledge. But these can happen pretty much, uh, pretty much any time. I think I've got something on my head. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna skip a call here. Uh, let's actually get off the lift. This is definitely one of the longer trams. You can even see on the map, we're, we're literally on the opposite side of the ship. So it does take a little while to get over here. So, like I said, we're gonna skip this cutscene. Nice. Uh, didn't get memed on here. You can sometimes get enemies. A little faster not to get that. Almost. There we go, nice. Okay, so now we're just gonna line ourselves up, run back. Our objective is just to fix the comms array, which is this room. So we can take a big shortcut here. Just come straight down here, right from the start. And uh, that one goes there. Just make sure we put these in the right spots, lined up. And now we solve this puzzle. We gotta redirect power into one of these slots up here. So this um, happens to be the fastest way. Wait, was, that, was that the right one? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes these get a little close together and they kind of float away from you as well. Just gotta make sure you're grabbing the right ones. Uh, but this, this uses the least number of possible pieces. There are some extra ones we don't use. Where did this go? There it is. Very easy to get confused in this area if one of your, if, you know, if you throw one of the pieces and, and it bounces off something and goes in a weird spot, it can be hard to find. So I, I tend to always try to throw them in the same spot. So I, I memorize more, you know, grab the piece that's here, not like, okay, wait, this is the L-shaped one, this is the other one, you know, because it gets kind of confusing. A uh, little bit of a tight timing here. I'm going to try to skip two cutscenes. Nice. Ship just shot in. The USM Valor. They must have heard our SOS. Not fast. What's a military ship doing out here? Yeah, so same as usual, you get locked in that room for about a minute if you don't skip the, the videos. But we're good. We can get all the answers we need. Alright. So now we are going to try to go use the comms here. Or something like that. Oh well, first we gotta get take uh, take care of this guy. So stasis him so we don't die. Enemy in the lift, kill him. All right. What is our specific objective actually? Oh, deploy the antenna. Right. That's that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, but then we will find out shortly that um, part of the Leviathan is actually still on the ship and is blocking what we need to use here. So we need to go outside and kill it. Error. Glass doors obstructed. Please contact a repair technician. And that is what we're gonna do. So instead of a turret section from the original game, we actually go out into space and have to fight this thing. Um, we, do, we do still use some cannons here, but it's a little bit more uh, in depth here. So we're gonna destroy these three weak spots. So we're gonna head over here. A little, little quicker. I mean, pretty, pretty similar speed as flying uh, versus this. But well, it's a little faster to toggle aim sprint here. Um, until we get here, we can take a little bit of a tighter path flying. So we're gonna do that. This boss isn't too hard on story. Uh, on Impossible, it is pretty scary, actually. Um, this is the place I was closest to death in my first Impossible playthrough. I think my uh, my health was about so low you couldn't even really see <laughs> the the lights on it at all. It was just like all blank. But I somehow survived. But yeah, like I said, on story, it's not, not too bad. If you don't take out this one fast enough, it will destroy the cannon. You gotta actually shoot 
the weak spot with your guns, but we got it in time. Yes. I'll try the antenna's manual cool. release again. Do it. There we go. I've got a transmission loaded and ready to go. All right, so we're gonna get three separate calls here. Uh, unfortunately, skipping them does not do anything, so I'm not going to. Yes, finally, you have sent that. We got that one stasis pack. That. Oh no, we don't. We did use them all. Okay. Do not open the escape pod. Repeat. Do not open that escape pod. Do you We got a stasis refill in a little bit here, so we're good. So, uh, that is Chen there, the, uh, one of the security officers from the beginning of the game who got turned into a necromorph, part of, uh, Hammond's team, and, uh, the Valor picked up the escape pod that he was in, and so it turns, uh, the whole, the whole ship into necromorphs, but we need to get a singularity core from the ship, so we're gonna head in there. Oh, also, you're not really, I, I don't think, intended to fly through that hole there, but you can. Um, it is just a little bit faster. Yo, oh, thank you for the good luck. The hell was that? Exiting zero gravity. Just saves a little time, skips a uh, audio call as well. All right, so we don't have to do this, but I'm going to try to skip this call here. I think um, there is a chance that the game can crash here, but in my experience, skipping that rig call to have all this UI stuff happen a little sooner seems to prevent it. Um, if it does happen, I have backup saves and stuff, so it's not a huge deal, but um, did not crash. Nice. Oh, you're not dead. Okay. Uh, am I just not getting the call from Hammond? Oh, there it was. Wow, that was super late. Interesting. He just, he just calls you to tell you that the new enemy type here... Or to tell you about them, I mean. Uh, they're called Twitchers. Um, the whole gimmick is they're really fast. But if you shoot their built-in stasis pack, um, it'll slow them down. All right, so this room, we got to be a little bit careful because if the Exploder's uh, sack gets damaged, then the entire room kind of just explodes. Fortunately, we can TK and pail that guy, which uh, has a homing effect in this game, so you don't really even have to aim it. You just have to throw it at him, and it'll it'll kill him. And fortunately, it does not home in on the explosive part of his body, so we are fine. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that was that was Dr. Kine. Uh, we'll see him a little bit later. We are actually gonna skip a significant amount of uh, cutscenes and stuff with him coming up in a bit, but that was our uh, introduction to him. All right, coming to a room where I know I died a lot in my casual playthrough, um, but once you figure out the timing, it's not not too bad. Uh, so this is the infirmary. We've got these lasers here, which, um, as you can probably guess, kill you instantly. But we're good. All right, so we managed to keep uh, ourselves alive here without having to reload a checkpoint all the way up, uh, or all the way from chapter seven. So we still have that quarantine is still active. Uh, we still have that quarantine state. So the fight just does not start here and we can just walk right out. Saving a nice chunk of time, about like a minute, I think. Um, now that we've done that skip, we actually are going to reload here. Uh, one, because it is a little bit faster. Oh, am I dead? I am dead. Uh, we should have gotten a save at the beginning of this room, but sometimes the game doesn't give it to you, so... Whoops. <laughs> Worst case, we can do the f we actually do the fight, which is, cool, which is fine, because that's a cool fight, but we might have gotten a save here. It's the engine room. Oh, we're good. Okay, nice. I have not gotten that checkpoint before, I'm pretty sure. So, okay, that, that's that's actually fine. And we're going to reload from here, like I said. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. So now that I've done a reload, we don't have that uh, quarantine effect anymore. So I can save the game now, which will be good for another skip later. 
Um, reloading this checkpoint usually does that. Um, but also uh, turns some of these fire things off and puts us on a good cycle to make it past these flames. Alright, so we're gonna do something kind of funny here. Um, with our increased movement speed, we can actually get in this room. Someone get the door open. So we get to see the cutscene from a slightly different angle here. And <laughs> just don't die? I'd never do that. Oh yeah, they're actually not solid here, so you can just like walk straight through them there. Yeah, rip. Alright, so now we gotta escape here. Fun fact, you can actually um, go to the Singularity Core and get it at the start of the mission, and all this stuff will progress, and it'll actually take you to the next level. But it doesn't actually start Chapter 10. Like all the objectives and stuff, so you can't do it. There, there is not a bounds uh, in zero G to get over there, but yeah, it's not not faster, unfortunately. But this is a cool level anyway. It's cool to see it, and uh, pretty short. Speaking of short levels, we're coming up to the shortest level in the run, uh, chapter ten. Normally, it is not very short. It's actually a pretty lengthy uh, level. But I mentioned at the beginning of the run that there were a few instances where we could exploit the objective system, and we are going to do a pretty major exploit here. So, uh, the objective we start with is reach the shuttle. Um, but once you actually go to the crew deck, um, you lose that objective, and you get a bunch of other ones you have to do before that one comes back, because you're not actually able to go to the shuttle right away. But, fortunately for us, that objective works the same way from the beginning of the level as it does at the end. So, with the objective reach the shuttle, we can just go there right away, and it will work. And it's one of the last objectives in the mission. So, I think this ends up being one of the two biggest skips in the run. Um, there's, there's, there's about two that save 10 plus minutes, and this is one of them. So... Hopefully, uh, we'll get it here. We do have a... Or we, we can make a safety save now. So, if we don't get a first try, it's not a huge deal. It's going to be very similar to the Chapter 8 skip you saw not too long ago, except we're going to go somewhere slightly different once we clip out of bounds. But fortunately, our companion cube is still up there in that room. So, we'll be able to use it to get out of bounds in the same spot. But uh, yeah, before but there, there was a short period of time where we were doing that, that uh, quarantine skip, but we didn't realize that reloading the game would give you a checkpoint, and so this actually was a bit more of a run killer, because, you know, if, <laughs> uh, if you didn't get it first try, uh, the run was just dead, which was very unfortunate. Because uh, the game, well, while you do get autosaves, for whatever reason, um, the last autosave is all the way back down, or, or back back on the valley. So, uh, not 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 a skip you want to miss in that case. But fortunately, we can save. It's not too bad, but you know, it's nice to have a little bit of a safety net here. Nice. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay, we might be able to save this. Uh, where am I? here um that's what i was talking about might be able to get off this sometimes you can depending where you land um i'm not sure if we can might be better just to reload yeah let's do that okay this is what i was talking about so that actually almost worked but we slipped off the ledge a little bit but the idea is we want to land on that platform out of bounds and the end of chapter 10. That actually was a room in chapter 10 where we landed. Uh, that's the room where we talk to Kine normally. But uh, 
Yeah, a lot of chapter 10 is actually directly below where we are right now. So the idea is we can just drop straight into the room with the shuttle. There is a backup where you land back in the zero G for the comms array, but I didn't land quite in the right spot. Okay, now we're okay. So we're gonna run off right about here. There we go, nice, okay. There we go. And now we have pretty much skipped uh, all of Chapter 10. This is the very last room. So we get our friend the Hunter again. That will follow us here. Right, we are actually going to kill him this time. Stuck on these enemies here. <laughs> Can you move? Thank you. Okay, uh, that should be good. Yeah, we got plenty of time. He's dead. Same thing as before, I just waited a brief moment before starting this cutscene, just so we don't get stuck. Uh, here's Mercer. He's back. Bring convergence. Make us whole. Not for long, though. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> um, oh, also, this um is kind of a, a funny detail. I didn't mention it earlier, but you might have noticed I have this white dot in the middle of my screen. Uh, it's actually an accessibility feature. But the only real reason I have that is um, it helps line up some things because you don't have any of those dots on the screen unless you're aiming. Um, so some of those fuse breaks from earlier where we shoot through the wall, uh, it helps line those up. Isaac, we have a problem. The Valor's carrying a 12 megaton warhead. <laughs> All right, very nice. This is one of the easiest cutscene skips in the game to forget as you get it on the tram here. There we go. Um, this is actually the last chance to get a random tram crash. So, looks like we're good. Maybe? Yeah, looks okay. We made it. Nice. Uh, what gun is that? Uh, so, we've got the plasma cutter and the contact beam. Contact beam is really good for uh, boss fights and and a skip as well. Oh, so we got fog here. That's actually another intensity director event you can get. Always nice. Excuse me. Always nice to get that instead of uh, enemy spawns. All right. So this is the cargo room. We've got to retrieve the marker. Um, it's the alien artifact that is controlling all these necromorphs. Causes them to, you know, be a thing. So first of all, we've got to kill some enemies here before uh, this next sequence starts. And where they actually spawn in is a little random. This last guy. Where is it? Oh, he's over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, next we gotta clear the path for the marker, or else I get these guys, gotta ignore them for a second. Shoot the last of these tentacles. Oh, you're not dead. Whoops. All right, and here we just want to make sure that there aren't enemies on the bridge here when we try to lift it. So you'll see me pull this up a few times because the enemies will just start walking away. 
from this side if you do that. And that should work. Okay. Access bridge is obstructing transfer. Grab another companion cube here. Do you read me? Mr. Clark. I'm Oh, nice. Okay, so got a random spawn, but you know, not in our way. That's what we want. All right, so we got a another quarantine fight here. If I had kept the quarantine effect from earlier, um, the actual quarantine part wouldn't play, like the door wouldn't lock, but we would still get the enemies. Uh, but either way, we do actually have to fight these enemies. Uh, otherwise, the next section will play out correctly. We made a Remy skin for Dead Space. I mean, if you can import the uh, the model, the three D models, you can. Some people have done stuff like that already. Actually, like the place character models. Um, I personally don't know how to do it, but it is possible. a little more better ammo than this I haven't seen this gun too much anyway. Alright, so there are a few pieces of dialogue that we don't have to skip. Quarantine lifted. So this being one of them, we just walk out there to trigger that to start. My name is Kendra Daniel. Stand by Isaac. He's bringing the shuttle in now. This one we do want to skip. So we'll unlock this door here. This this level was confusing for a bit for me to get used to because we used to just skip all of these and then we realized that not skipping some of them was a bit faster. And there are some more similar ones like that in a bit. But we'll leave the box there for now. Now we need to guide the marker over to the shuttle here. The idea is they're wanting to take it back down to the planet, Ages 7, so they can return it to the, uh, the pedestal it was on. Uh, fortunately for us, these sections are a little bit more automated. In the original, you have to actually drag it yourself all the way, but this is definitely much easier. The added element here is that um, we have to kill all the enemies in the room for the objective to complete. Oh wait, was I supposed to? Oh no, I was. Okay. I was supposed to do this one first though, right? <laughs> okay. So, pretty straightforward, we're just trying to make sure we kill all these guys and also make sure we turn these as fast as possible so the marker can move right away. And particularly these enemies, the lurkers, like to uh, get in the way of the marker. And the marker will actually stop if there's an enemy in front of it. But that should be all of them. Yep. Skip that one. We're not gonna skip this one. Don't board. Come quickly. Go open the hatch for him. So you might be able to see this because we can move so fast, but Kendra is is uh her model's actually not in there. <laughs> it's just the gunshot. Um, but yeah, so Kine is dead. Kendra betrays us. Uh, you know, it's not not great for us, but you know we'll we'll figure something out. All right, so 
So we skipped a pretty long call with Kendra there. And we're going to skip another one with Nicole right here. And we're going to go uh, hang out with her for a little bit. So uh, one cool thing to mention, actually, is uh, depending on what side missions you do, um, you can get different dialogue. So this scene can, is different if you do Nicole's uh, side mission, for example. Uh, we did not, so we're going to get the regular dialogue. Um, so you'll see, oh, I don't know, you probably can't hear me, um, or maybe you can, but uh, I'm trying to throw this box right now. There are certain sections of the game where you lose the ability to throw objects. So we're going to do a box clip. But I have to manually set up the box there and pull it towards me every time. There's still hope. Um, so it's a little tricky because every time you miss it, you got to go manually like put it back and like drop it down. Um, fortunately for us, though, we have like three or four tries at this before um, we would lose any time. You'll know what to do. Because essentially, we're calling the shuttle back, and you just kind of have to wait here for a really long time. Uh, the door itself. Uh, for this room doesn't even unlock until the shuttle's all the way back in the hangar. But if we can clip out, uh, hopefully we can actually get to the shuttle before it even... Um, oh, nice, okay. Sometimes that one's a little finicky. That went really well. Nice, okay. So now we have plenty of time. I'll show off something else kind of funny here, which is that this railing bleeds if you touch it. Um, sometimes. Wait, it's not gonna do it now? Really? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. It's like bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Usually it does in that other spot, but oh well. Cool. So now we are already here by the time the shuttle gets here, so we can just get on as soon as possible. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about the story of the ending of the game, because you're not really going to actually see it. Because <laughs> um, we have the last very, very big skip coming up towards the end of the run here, which is chapter 12 skip. So basically, um, you are supposed to go through the level and do more of these marker drag sequences, or like marker transport sections. And uh, eventually you return it to the marker pedestal, you know, Nicole's with you. And she's like, we are whole again, all this stuff. And then Kendra shows up and she's like, hey, actually, um, you know, Nicole's been dead this whole time. This is actually Dr. Elizabeth Cross from Hydroponics and you're just hallucinating. She's hallucinating that you're also someone else. And then she kills Cross, steals her key and tries to escape with the marker on the shuttle again. And that leads us into the final boss. So we're not going to do pretty much any of that stuff. So... Um, this is the other level where we can uh, exploit the objective system, and the reason for that is this is the only level in the game where we are not actually required to do all the objectives to, or really any of them, to beat the level. And part of the reason is because there's no levels after it that would softlock. Um, like if Chapter 9, the Valor, was at the end of the game, you could also skip that one as well, because it does progress you to the next level, it just doesn't start the next chapter properly. But here, the only thing we have to do is interact with this one blue panel, which will spawn in the final boss. And beating the boss rolls the credits and ends the game correctly. Um, so if you're that's all we're going to do. And fortunately, that panel is active from the very beginning of the level. Now, this trick is really, really cool, but it is also very difficult. In actual PV attempts, it is kind of a nightmare because it's about an hour and 40-something minutes in, and it's not the most consistent thing in the world and there are many parts to it and if any of them go wrong you've got to retry the whole thing um, my pb for example gets everything pretty much first try so you know trying to com compare against that is is very difficult um so very big run killer right at the end but uh you know, we're we're doing just fine on time so i'm not worried about it but just thought i'd mention that because it's a bit a bit scary usually here so we're going to just ignore Nicole. We're going to grab this big box here. So we need to get this box to the end of the level with us so we can actually uh, clip into the room we need to get into. So I clip in this corner and I aim. Your hitbox gets bigger when you aim, so it pushes you up uh, if you get stuck. Now we're going to try to use this box to prop fly onto the building. We want to get it stuck under us like this. 
And then launch up like that. Okay, that was really good. Now we're going to launch the box into ourselves to fly through the air. And we need to re-grab the box, which we did not do. And I'm stuck. Okay, we're going to try that again. Oh, that was really close. But that's the idea. You get on the building, and instead of using the box to clip through a wall, we're using it to get a bunch of momentum. Um, I think I let go a little too early, so it didn't give us as much speed. But again, we need the box to go with us. So we need to hit ourselves with the box to launch, then re-grab the box and throw it down at a certain point. Because it can also deload if you hold on to it for too long. Because um, there's a load trigger we will fly through in the air. And if you're still holding the box, when you touch that, it'll despawn, which we'll see if it happens. Um, if, if that does happen, um, you can get spawned back in sometimes. But yeah, it's a, it's a, bit, a bit tricky. Uh, I'm trying to get him to like settle in here. Sometimes he doesn't want to do it. Um, usually don't want him to face this way, but it might work. We need the box to get stuck under us in a certain way, and if he's facing against the wall, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, that could work. That's not how I usually do it, but maybe. Oh, nope, we're back in bounds. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so you can see already what I'm talking about, about how weird this trick is. Um, I'm stuck up here. There's a lot of things that can happen. On aim, I can get off. Pretty sure. Oh, maybe it'll show this off, actually, if this works. This is not useful for the run, usually, but you get stuck in collision where he vibrates like that. Sometimes he will launch off of it. Sometimes that can happen here to save this. There we go, like that. Nice. Not really useful anywhere else currently, but it's kind of cool. Um, let's see if we can... If we get stuck, we kind of want him to not be vibrating like this, because for whatever reason he likes to not get in the right spot. Okay, that works. Honestly, that first part is, like, probably the hardest part to, to get consistently. It just, like, doesn't work a lot of the time. Okay, there we go. Alright, let's try this again. There we go. That should be good. Nice. Okay, so now we're over here. We're going to use this again to prop fly, this time to launch us up here. All right, this is the, the last area of the level. So now um, the collision here is very weird, so we need to run off in a very precise way so we don't get stuck. We're good. Okay. So now we're going to clip through this wall here. The box. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So using this spawns the final boss, because the final boss is in the same uh, starting area of this chapter. So now Kendra comes to go do her whole big reveal. We're going to skip that by clipping through that wall. Very nice. And there you go. That is chapter 12 skip, and now all we have to do is kill the final boss. So we're... I don't know, I'd say five or so minutes from... Or... I mean, more like three or four minutes of time here, I believe. I forget how long this takes exactly, but something like that. So now you see this is all, all different now, even though we were just here. I'm gonna start this cutscene. So she tries to escape. Um, it does not go very well. This is the hive mind here, the final boss. Um, yeah, does not does not let her get away. Fortunately, it does not do this to us, where it just kind of destroys us immediately. It actually gives us a chance, so... That's nice for us, I guess. Alright, so there are a few things we can do here to make this fight much faster. The first thing is, on the first phase, there are five bulbs you have to destroy. Um, after the first, like, round or cycle of that, um, the boss will get iframes every time you destroy one. But if we shoot fast enough with the contact beam, because of its, you know, constant hitbox, we can actually get all five in one go like that. Very nice. Box out of the way, maybe get some ammo and stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna get some regular enemies, and ideally, we're gonna take the explosives from both of the exploders that spawn, and we're gonna use them to throw at the boss and speed up the ending uh, a lot. 
So I need to make sure I don't, or try not to actually hit the explosive. Uh, that works, I guess. Gonna make sure this gets put in a spot where nothing else will hit it. Oh, uh, a little close. Okay, so just making sure that's over there. So now he's gonna do two slams and then open up his chest. So there are five weak spots. Ideally, we can destroy all five with both of these. So I'm gonna try to destroy the top two first. Nice. All right, so for whatever reason, if you destroy the top two versus the bottom three, he'll only do one of these acid attacks, so three. So we dodge the acid. Just trying to stay away from the explosive there so he doesn't hit it. Now we dodge four of these. And then we get one more chance to destroy um, the weak spot on the chest. And if we throw that one correctly, we'll destroy it all three. Um, doing this in two instead of five, excuse me, five cycles saves a lot of time. Because each phase takes forever. Very nice. Okay. All right, we're almost done here. We gotta hit one more weak spot. Again, Contact Me makes this very, very easy. Highly recommend for, for uh, casual playthroughs, because I mean, just look at this. It's very hard to aim there. Uh, they make it intentionally difficult to aim, uh, but Contact Me makes it pretty free. All right, time is coming up here once we hit the ramp on our left, uh, going into the shuttle. Going up in like, I don't know, like 10 seconds or so. All right, and time. GG. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so that is Dead Space, uh, any percent unrestricted. Uh, appreciate y'all watching, appreciate you having me on to show off the run. As you can see, it's already uh, pretty broken for only being out for a month or so. So, um, yeah, it's been, been super fun to run this so far. And, uh, yeah, hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, as well, if anyone wanted to find you, where can they find you? Uh, so you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash sharkhead87. Uh, I run mostly horror games. Um, I run a bunch of different things as well, but I am most known for Dead Space and Outlast games. Um, haven't been grinding this game as much recently. I, I played it pretty much every day for the first month <laughs> when it was out on stream. So uh, I still play it sometimes, but you know we're playing some other stuff, taking a little bit of a break. But um, yep, that's where that's where mostly I do speedruns and stuff. Um, I guess just last thing, real quick, I'll say uh, shoutouts to the Dead Space community. We've had a ton of people come in uh, as like either their first Dead Space run or first speedrun uh, with this game. Uh, so that's been super cool to see all the new people come in. Um, so just shout out. Uh, shout outs to everyone there and just anyone who's, you know, ran this game or, you know, look for strats and stuff. Um, oh, I wish I could yeah. talk to you. Th and, th and thank you again for watching, everybody. I appreciate it and uh, hope you enjoyed. All right. Thank you once again. And if you did enjoy the run, be sure to check out Sharkat87, which you can find uh, somewhere in the GDQ Twitch chat here. Uh, that being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of Speedruns in the Crypt. It was fun looking at a lot of the recent space horror games, which there were a lot of them lately, and there's plenty of more that did come out as well. Uh, we will be back in two weeks this time. I know last time I said two weeks on accident, and then we had the month off, but we're actually going to be back in two weeks. Uh, well, there's a lot more fun games coming up, but before you go, if you're watching this on YouTube, come on over to the Twitch side, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the Games and Quick YouTube channel. Uh, it is appreciated, and we have a lot of fun here on Twitch, so come on, stop by. Uh, anyway, I've been your host, Dysis. I plan a lot of these out. Uh, if you liked it, uh, I don't know, I'm somewhere around here. You can find my name there. I do horror games myself. Anyway, have a great rest of the day and or night, and see you next time.